important. Thanks a lot, Ian. Well, part of the festivities and activities this week was a trip up to the North Shore on the island of Oahu and the Polynesian Cultural Center, which is home to the Polynesian Football Hall of Fame and also a place where many of the players were able to experience firsthand the culture that certainly dominates here in the islands, Jordan. And I think by talking with most of the players, it was an experience they truly appreciated. Yeah, a lot of them, a big exposure to some of the different cultures and really unique because of all the similarities but also distinct cultures within Polynesia itself. That's right. Well, we are counting down to the kickoff here for this iteration of the Hula Bowl. We'll be back from Aloha Stadium in just a moment. First to supply some of the adrenaline here leading to kickoff in this edition of the Newsweek Hula Bowl. Well, this week we also not only celebrated the return of the Hula Bowl, we celebrated the first class of inductees into the Hula Bowl Hall of Fame. Eric Dickerson, famed SMU runner, also a 1990 inductee into the Pro Football Hall of Fame, was among them. Anthony Miller, who is in the house, five-time Pro Bowler out of Tennessee, and a Dallas Cowboy of note, 15 pick overall in the 1988 draft. Junior Ayu, who starred at Arizona State, a 1997 inductee into the Canadian Football Hall of Fame. And we also have representation from the sideline. Mike White, head coach at Cal, Illinois, and Oakland in the NFL. Well, let's send it down to Kainoa Carlson, who has some Hall of Fame level company. That's right. Thanks so much, guys. I'm joined here now with Anthony Miller, the newest inductee to the Hula Bowl Hall of Fame. What that mean to you? Oh, it means a lot, uh, especially, you know, planning this game and um, having a great career and being honored for it and coming out here to this wonderful... Uh, atmosphere and it uh coming back to hawaii definitely was a uh happy moment you know hawaii is a place that you've got some history with you're a five-time pro bowler so how happy are you to see this game back the hula bowl you know kind of the nostalgia of it at a time as one of the premier postseason college all-star games so how happy are you to see uh the game revitalized here in 2020 oh definitely happy you know i got a chance to play in my senior year that definitely helped me out uh brought my stock up a little bit um, we had, at that time, it probably been probably about 17 first-rounders. So, you know, to bring it back and, you know, help these guys get a chance to improve their stock, uh, definitely um, excited for them. And we're excited to have you back here. Thank you so much. You'll also be uh, at midfield for the coin flip as well. Jordan Cunha, we're going to send it back up to you guys. Thanks a lot, Kainoa. Yeah, a bit of a homecoming, certainly. Uh, Five-time Pro Bowler. He's familiar with the atmosphere here at Aloha Stadium. Another player involved here tonight uh, who is familiar with the surroundings, Braden Fehoko. We talked about him earlier, a defensive tackle from LSU, a national champion. Played his high school ball at Farrington High School, not very far from here. And when he was a kid, his dad, Vili the Warrior, was basically the primary entertainer slash mascot for University of Hawaii football games. And Braden was one of his drummers. We caught up with Braden Fehoko earlier in the week. So what made you transfer from Texas Tech to LSU? Obviously a big risk. Yeah, chance. yeah, definitely. I think just um, the level of competition and just, you know, being able to develop my skills at a higher level. Um, playing the Big 12 compared to the SEC is a, is a different type of animal. And so I felt that, you know, if I could play in the SEC and, and get two good years of football under my belt, it will help me towards my, you know, future career in the NFL. And um, obviously you just won coming out for national championship. Uh, can you describe your emotions? Obviously, because you transferred there, you took that risk yeah. and it seemed to pay it off. Yeah, it's it's awesome. Um, you never know what type of reward you're going to get uh, when you take risks. And so, uh, you know, to come out 15-0 and this year, um, just to be, you know, deemed one of the best college teams in history is such a great honor um, to cap it off with a national championship. Um, I'm blessed. Thank God for, you know, putting me in this opportunity and, and uh, hoping this next step is a good one. So, obviously, you played your whole high school career in Hawaii, and you grew up drumming, and, you know, me and you drumming on the sidelines. Yeah. Uh, do you kind of see this game as a homecoming of sorts, and what kind of opportunity is the Blue Bowl giving you? Uh, man, it's awesome um, to be back, to play in front of the home crowd. Um, you know, you, you can never trade playing at home or being at home for anything in the world, uh, especially being in front of the hometown fans, fan, uh, friends, family, relatives. Um, it's such a great honor. You know, a lot of people didn't get to watch me play in person while I was at Texas Tech or LSU. So, you know, coming Sunday, 5.30 p.m. in the Lowell Stadium, a lot of people get the opportunity to watch me, and I'm grateful for it. Appreciate it. Yeah, for sure. The homecoming said the toughest part of the week was trying to stay away from the Zippy's Max Salad.
Yeah, I think he said he went every day uh, <laughs> since he's been home. He's brought some LSU teammates with him as well, and he's kind of been one of those liaisons for a lot of these guys on their first trip to Hawaii. He's been sort of tour guide as well as the football duties. So in other words, he didn't do a very good job of staying away from the Max Allen at Zippy's, but you know what? He's back in the islands and obviously feeling very comfortable. Yesterday, uh, the two teams, they held separate clinics in different parts of the island. You had the Kai team, head coached by Rex Ryan. They went out to Waianae High School. Meanwhile, Mike Smith took the Aina team to Aala Park in downtown Honolulu, where they were able to work with some aspiring, perhaps future, hula uh, bowlers. Yeah, two things that this new iteration of the hula bowl has made it a point of where we've already talked about the history with the, pro, uh, the hula bowl hall of fame and then also giving back to the community there are gonna be a ton of kids in attendance here this evening that also went to the clinics yesterday giving back to the community and uh, maybe some future hula bowlers That's getting right. a chance to showcase their stuff and thanks to the motivate foundation and marcus mariota a lot of the participants in those camps yesterday in the house here at aloha stadium more from honolulu hawaii when we return about this you know this collaboration with the hula bowl um, looking at um, representing Hawaii as a designer um, anything that comes here that honors this space and this island home is a tremendous honor and we're super excited to see everyone and to be able to dress them in prints that are really inspired by this beautiful place Welcome back to Aloha Stadium. The players being introduced here before the fans on hand. Time for us to get introduced to the VIP head coaches in this year's Newsweek Hula Bowl. For that, let's send it down to Ian Shearing. Standing by here with longtime NFL coach Rex Ryan, uh, the head coach of Team Kai for this week's Hula Bowl. It's a pleasure to have you here. Uh, I have to say, there are rumors already going around about your pregame speech in the locker room just a few minutes ago to these guys. It seems like there's people fired up coming out of that locker room. Tell me what you said to your team. Uh, you know, I just said that everybody's talking about how good this red team is. I guess we're getting ready to find out. Uh, how has the football been? You know, we've talked uh, throughout the day already about how this is an opportunity for guys to come out and prove themselves to coaches and scouts of the NFL caliber. Uh, what have you seen and what do you expect the football to look like this year? I evening? think it's going to be, uh, I mean, really, it's going to look like real football. Like, this is, these kids are here for a reason. I mean, these are all all-star players, and they're showing it during the week. They all worked hard. And uh, I think we're going to put on a heck of a game today. I really do. He is an all-star coach. This is Rex Ryan with Team Kai. And standing by with uh, Team Ina is our kind of Carlson. Mahalo, Ian. Standing here with Mike Smith, uh, the head coach uh, for Team uh, Mauka here tonight. How, or excuse me, Team Ina. How excited are you to be here? And, and what, what did you think of the football this week? Well, it's a pleasure to be here. And it's a great opportunity to work with these young guys. And to me, that's the big thing is they're getting an opportunity to show their abilities to the NFL community. We've got a lot of scouts out here, and some of these guys are going to be playing on Sunday. Uh, what have you seen uh, coming out here? You know it's an all-star game, but we've seen some of the practices this week. Pretty competitive football as well. It is. Uh, you know, the big thing is you want to make sure that these guys come out and play fast tonight. It's really uh, uh, more about them than the scheme. We're just trying to make sure that they're going to be able to get lined up and uh, perform against each other so they can show how good of a play they are. We're excited. It sounds like it's going to be a good show. Uh, Kanoa Jordan, we're going to send it back up to you guys. Thanks a lot, Kanoa. Yeah, I mean, typical between Rex Ryan and Mike Smith. They faced off as head coaches uh, in the NFL. They are one and one. So this is the rubber match. Yeah, without a doubt. And even though it's an all-star game, the competitive juices don't go away. Two guys who haven't been on the sideline in a couple of years, but they were excited to get back out here, coach their guys up a little bit. Uh, and the players, you could see it during the week as well. A lot of credibility, obviously, when you got two former head coaches leading your groups, and these guys are ready to get after it. I mean, Rex Ryan, everybody talking about how good the Aina team is. We're about to show them. Yeah, you got to love Rex, right? <laughs> Rex, if you put a microphone in front of Rex, you'll never be disappointed. Uh, and he was really excited about a lot of his kids. Uh, and he, he said it. They're expecting to put on a good show tonight. And again, it's not just in an attempt to make it to the NFL or impress the scouts representing NFL teams. You'll have representatives from the CFL, the XFL. Heck, there was even a presentation this week from the WWE. So the future could be bright in a variety of ways for these players. More hula bowl when we come back.
moment, we're going to have to jump in the water or bring in a person. So it's a lot of responsibility. Things can go wrong quick. It can be really severe. But I enjoy what we do. Without boasting too much, I think we're, we're really good at what we do. Our connection to the truth is lost. And we don't believe that we can change this. It may be a shock, but our country stands divided while biased news proliferates. But we can reverse this. While biased news proliferates, our country stands divided. It may be a shock, but we can change this. And we don't believe that our connection to the truth is lost. Hey America, come in for a $20 feast. Come to TGI Fridays today for two apps, two entrees, and two desserts, all starting at only $20. Come together, come together. Come in now to feast. When a threat from fire and water damage is at its biggest, hand the cleanup over to the team that stays with you until even the smallest detail. In appreciation of their tireless efforts and dedication, the Hula Bowl would like to present a check of $10,000. Presenting the check is Uncle Nick Logan, executive event organizer of the Hula Bowl. And receiving the check is the Hula Bowl's military ambassador, retired U.S. Army Lieutenant Colonel Pat O'Farrell. Football fans, please rise for, so we can take a moment of silence for the families of our brave, fallen Honolulu Police Officers Tiffany Victoria Enriquez and Kaulike Kalama, and for everyone affected by Hawaii's recent tragic events. We'd also like to ask you to take a moment of silence for the passing of Los Angeles Lakers great Kobe Bryant. in singing our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave for the land of the free and the home of the brave. And now singing Hawaii Puno E, Hawaii's own star. Kalahiki. 
showcases the sport's hidden gems. Players looking to make a name for themselves as they prepare for a shot at the NFL and football glory. And it all begins right now. Welcome to the Newsweek Hula Bowl. As usual, it was another spectacular day here in Honolulu, Hawaii, as players representing various programs from a multitude of divisions arrived at Aloha Stadium. Every one of them out to prove his medal in hopes of impressing the scouts and earning an opportunity to fulfill their professional gridiron dreams. It'll be Team Kai representing the ocean versus Team Aina representing the land live here in the island. Aloha everybody. Kanoa Leahy alongside Jordan Helly. We'll be hearing from Ian Shearing and Kainoa Carlson down on the field shortly. Jordan, the hula bowl is back. Now, we always talk about Hawaii being a vacation spot for a little fun in the Approaching sun. This has been a business trip, though, the for these players. Yeah, a lot of guys looking to make an impression, right, for player personnel one, groupings DeAndre out there for scouts uh, at a multitude of levels, not just the NFL, but professional football opportunities all over the country and internationally. Well, it's good to have the Hula Bowl back. We go way back when you want to remember the start of this thing, all the way back to 1946. This year's edition of the game, 111 players representing 69 colleges and universities and also representing the United States, Canada, Japan, and Australia. Now, you may be familiar with some of these names. You may be familiar with them by the end of tonight, that's for sure. Yeah, without a doubt, right? DeAndre Francois, one of the biggest names in this game, former Florida State quarterback, finishing his career at FCS Hampton. Then you talk about the local kid, right? Braden Fehoko from Farrington High School here nearby. Part of that national championship team, really good interior defensive lineman who will get to showcase his stuff here at the Hula Bowl. All right, well, speaking of Braden Fehoko, he is with our Ian Shearing down on the field. Not just close to where Braden Fehoko grew up here in Honolulu, but just a few yards away from where you spent most of your childhood banging the drums on the field for University of Hawaii home games. Braden Fehoko, a national champion from just a couple of weeks ago, here at the Hula Bowl. How does it feel to be home playing one more college game in your home stadium? Uh, 
feels great. Um, honored to be here. Honored for the hula bowl to, you know, not just host me, but two other players for my team as well. Um, happy to be able to share the culture with every other player on this roster. Uh, but other than that, it's just a blessing to be back home. How has the week been? You guys have been here. We know <laughs> taking the guys out to Zippies. Yeah. You've been having some Max Salad doing the whole deal. Yeah. But how has the week been? How's the football been? And how did the guys look? It's been nice. Um, it's been a little competitive, so uh, we're ready to go. And, and I think I'm about to head out on kickoff right now. It's game time. We're going to send it over now to Kainoa Carlson. He is Braden Fehoko. Mahalo, Ian. We're joined here now by the Division Three uh, Gallardi winner. He won the Division Three National Player of the Year. And now he's in paradise. Brock Rudder. Brock, what's it been like being here in Hawaii this week? Man, it's been, uh, it's been the time of our life this whole week. It's a great opportunity for each one of us, especially as small school players. And to be able to do this in, in Hawaii just is icing on the top of the cake. And it's been great weather all week, great hospitality. The people of Hawaii have been great for us all week. Well, we love having you here. Now, what does it mean to end the season like this for you? You go ahead and you lead your program to its first ever Division Three National Championship, yeah. and you're ending it here in the Hula Boa Law Stadium. What does it mean to end your career here in Hawaii? Yeah, it's really surreal. I mean, we had a great, great run at North Central. The coaches are outstanding there. The players around me were awesome. And it's just so surreal to be able to enjoy my time here and be able to cap off this great year here. And I couldn't have done it without any of my teammates back home and my coaches back home. Humble kid, big game from him tonight. We're excited. Jordan Kanoa will send it back up to you guys. All right, thanks a lot, Kainoa. Well, we take a look at the head coaches for Team Ina. It is Mike Smith, former Atlanta Falcons head coach. In fact, he coached in this stadium in the 2011 Pro Bowl. Uh, where the NFC beat the Bill Belichick-led AFC 55-41. And on the other side, well, a guy who coached along with Mike Smith in Baltimore. They won a Super Bowl together in 2000 for the Ravens. Rex Ryan, of course, eight seasons as an NFL head coach with the Jets and Bills. They did face off when they were head coaches. They're 1-1 one and one in those NFL battles, so this is the rubber match, as they say. The weather here in Hawaii. Uh, it is fantastic. We uh, feel guilty sometimes presenting these numbers, but 80 degrees here as we get ready for kickoff, mostly clear. Yeah, it's been an absolutely perfect day here on Oahu. Temperatures cooling off just a little bit. Sun's starting to duck away. Perfect evening for football, and a lot of these guys an opportunity to showcase their stuff. So the Kai will be wearing the blue jerseys. I know wearing the red jerseys. Kai won the coin toss. And they elected to kick off, so it will be Bailey Hale, kicker from Louisiana Tech, getting ready to send a deep couple of guys back there for Team Ina. Maurice French has now located himself deep to receive this kick. Now, we have some unique hula bowl rules. Most of the rules when it comes to catches, tackles, uh, even... Uh, in terms of certain challenges and time-related rules, uh, they will be NFL rules. Uh, we are also, though, under the Hula Bowl regulations, uh, not going to allow kick returns, so all fair catches. We're going through the motions a little bit here when it comes to kickoffs and punts. As French gets under it, and the 5'11", 200-pound receiver slash returner from Pittsburgh is able to haul in the fair catch. So it will be a first and 10 for Team Ina at the 25-yard line. Yeah, an opportunity. We'll, we'll still go through the kicking, right? The, these kickers and punters, Bailey Hale being one of them, an opportunity to showcase their stuff on the kickoff, show what kind of leg they have, although it does negate some of the skill set of a guy like Maurice French, who has been so good as a returner in his Pittsburgh career. Well, the starting quarterback for Team Ina will be Ryan Willis out of Virginia Tech, 6'4", 220-pounder, as he led the Hokies to an 8-5 and five season in 2019. Made four starts. Nine touchdowns, five interceptions, dealt with injury issues. Did spend two previous seasons at Kansas. But a guy who has looked sharp this week and first play, he's thrown to the sideline and a little miscommunication already as that one is nearly picked off by North Dakota State's Marquise Bridges. Yeah, Marquise Bridges, part of that unbelievable dynasty in Fargo. We've got national champions at both the Division Three, Division Two, and FCF level here uh, in the hula bowl, little miscommunication. We mentioned French's explosiveness. He wanted to go over the top. Willis had him on a stop route there on the sideline. Could have easily been a pick. All right, you see the rest of the team. Ina starters, a guy to keep an eye on, number 27, Ooh. Michael Petway Jr. out of Iowa State. The coaches have been raving about what he has done throughout the week. Yeah, Arkansas transfer, a guy who can go up and get it. And this is going to be a keeper by Willis, and he dives forward across the 30-yard line. They will mark him down at the 31. That's going to bring up third and four. 
the Team Kai defense, Takorian Darden and Reggie Walker combining on that first tackle. Gabe Sewell, he's an interesting story, comes from what is becoming a famous football family. His brother Penay, the Outland Trophy winner, tackle for Oregon, the first Polynesian to win that award. And we saw his younger brother Noah, a five-star recruit, also headed to Oregon in last week's Polynesian Bowl. Yeah, they've got another brother who also played collegiate football as well at Nevada and Utah. It is an incredibly athletic family. So third down, and it will be Willis looking to throw, and heaves it to nowhere. So it'll be fourth down here, a little over a minute in to this opening quarter. He was looking for Maurice French again, the Pittsburgh Panther, and that's twice he's targeted French, and twice they've been on different pages of the playbook. As that time he wanted French to continue his route, stopped it, hooked it up at the sticks. So that's part of the process, right? You only get four days basically to install and develop some timing with your receivers. So Blake Maimon from Oregon on to punt it, and it'll be retrieved by Aleva Hifo out of Brigham Young University. And again, all fair catches, so he's able to secure it uh, right there at about the 25-yard line. And Hifo's another one of those guys. Really good receiver, but we saw the last time he played on this field in the Hawaii Bowl against the University of Hawaii, nearly took a punt back to the house. Almost the best part of his game is in the kick return. Well, this was one of the guys we highlighted in the open. DeAndre Francois started his career at Florida State. He is out of Orlando, Florida. You see what he has done at Hampton University. 2,522 yards passing, 26 TDs, 14 interceptions, a 56% completion rate as a senior for Hampton University in Virginia. And he is looking to throw. No, make it a delayed handoff. He gives it to Gerald Bright, a 5'10", 190-pound back from Utah State, and he doesn't get much. Cecil Cherry and Michael Scott combining on the tackle there as you take a look at the rest of the high offense. A guy who has shined a little bit is actually one of the University of Hawaii products. Jason Matthew Sharsh, 5'11", 180-pound receiver who just seems to always make the right play. Yeah, really good in the slot. He's been playing a little bit outside as well this week for Team Kai. And we've got a chance to watch a couple of practices this week and when Francois has looked the best. It's often been thrown to Sharsh and his former University of Hawaii teammate Jojo Ward, the two Rainbow Warriors. So DeAndre Francois now under center. And you see a couple of players in the backfield and a little mix-up. So we're going to have a timeout. Our first timeout here just over two minutes in. Media timeout. And so we'll take a break as well. Second and eight coming up for Team Kai. Teams still trying to get a little organized here at the Hula Bowl. Just over two minutes into this now reboot, if you will. The Team Ina starting defense. Guy to keep an eye on is... Keikoa Nawahine. Uh, he is out of Boise State, the Mountain West Conference champions. A safety at 6'2", 205 pounds. Playmaker, certainly, for the Broncos. Two-time All-Mountain West second-team selection. So second and eight here for Team Kai. Out of the timeout, Francois steps up in the pocket. He's going to unleash it. Back there is Hifo, and he can't come up with it. It was a battle for that jump ball. Josh Nurse out of Utah. 6'3", 200-pound cornerback making the defensive play. Yeah, credit the pass rush that time. Maybe Bryce Brown, Evans there, forced Francois to have to shuffle up in the pocket just ever so slightly threw off the timing of that because Hifo had Nurse beat, although if you want a guy in a jump ball situation, it is Nurse, a long, rangy corner for the Utes. Well, obviously, neither of these teams are coming out with any sort of conservative thinking offensively. We have seen passing plays in multitude already, even though it seems as though it's taken a few snaps for both of these offenses to kind of figure out what's going on. Yeah, each team is taking a shot at this point. Let's see what Francois can do with third and long. We got a penalty flag here. You see Steve Strimling, he's the head referee. Served as an alternate no for the national the championship There game. was no contact with the defense in the neutral zone. Please reset the play clock, third down. So they will renege on that penalty flag. Yeah, I did want to credit Michael Scott, the Oklahoma State defensive end, who has been impressive at practice this week. He was the guy coming off the edge pressuring Francois on that second down snap. So it's now third and eight here. Francois out of the gun. Again, under some pressure, steps up in the pocket, throws down the sideline, but 
A little bit too much of a line drive there for his receiver, Jamari Hester, out of Jacksonville State in Alabama. Monquavian Brinson out of Georgia Southern was covering on the play defensively, brings up fourth down. Brinson, really good coverage. Tough matchup, Hester, six foot seven. He's impressed in some of the All-Star games earlier this offseason as well. Brinson, 5'11", really good corner, really good corner tandem at Georgia Southern the last couple of years, of course. High draft prospect, Kendall Vildler, his opposite corner made a pick yesterday in the Senior Bowl. Austin Parker now on to punt, receiving the long snap from Jacob Tillman, and it will be retrieved by DJ Davis, 5'8", 170-pound running back out of Southern Illinois. So Team Ina's offense once again to make its way back out onto the field. We assure you that these teams offensively have practiced, in fact, have practiced at length. We just haven't really been able to tell yet in these first two possessions. Yeah, it's always a little bit, you finally get going game speed, right? I mean, you're in practice, not even really going to thud at tempo, keeping guys up, keeping guys off the ground, and all of a sudden you get live in the game. And the other thing about this as well, I think on both sides you'll see really good pass rushers and defensive linemen that could throw off the timing of a group that hasn't had a lot of time together. Willis stays in there at quarterback, and he's able to swing it out. To Michael Bandy. Bandy, diminutive certainly at 5'10 out of San Diego, but this is a guy who was part of a 9-3 Torero squad, two-time All-American. Yeah, he's put up some ridiculous numbers as Michael Bandy for the Toreros. 7.3 receptions a game as a junior. He was 6.3 receptions a game this season. Fifth best single season his junior year in FCS history. He's a guy to keep your eye on, especially in that slot. A guy with next level potential. The Cows, Travion Beck making the play defensively there. Second down and seven. And Willis keeps it now. Fires along the seam. And looked as though he was checking out Amir Dorsey out of Rhode Island. But too much traffic there defensively. It was Beck again getting in the way. Yeah, Beck's done a nice job. Not a huge guy at corner, but really physical. He's a guy who was often playing in the slot. He was their nickelback most of the time, matched up with a lot of those physical tight ends in the Pac-12. He feels very comfortable getting up, pressing at the line of scrimmage. He can play in space. Missed a couple of games with injury, but uh, he has a little daredevil in him. He's been racing dirt bikes since he was seven years old, so this is nothing for him. Third and seven. Willis is going to be clobbered. Taken down by Mosese Fifita, 6'1", 330-pound beast out of Air Force. Fifita had an incredible season. This was breakout year, seven and a half tackles for loss, six sacks for the Air Force Academy, who had a terrific season, a big bowl win over Washington State to close out the season. Fifita, a guy in the middle, 330 or so, just a bowling ball that can come and wreck you on the interior. And to have those kind of tackle numbers playing at the nose, really impressive stuff. So that forces another Team Ina punt, and it'll be Hawaii's Jojo Ward getting under that one for the fair catch. So again, things will get started for Team Kai at the 25-yard line. Well, this was earlier in the week, another one of the activities for the players taking part in this year's Hula Bowl. They visited Pearl Harbor National Memorial. And for many of these players, in fact, I would say the vast majority of them, it is their first time out to the islands. And so it is a combination, certainly, of a football experience for them, a job interview, but some of these activities to try to explore not just the culture here, but also the United States history that has taken place Pearl Harbor with the USS Arizona Memorial. Uh, I was talking with George Obina. He is the defensive end for Team Ina out of Sacramento State. He said that was a first for him, not visiting Pearl Harbor, but being on a boat. It's amazing some of the first-time experiences a lot of these players are getting to experience here on the trip, whether it was the trip to the Polynesian Cultural Center or going to Pearl Harbor. Francois eluding pressure with a pump fake there. He's going to dash for the sideline, out of bounds, and at about the line of scrimmage. So George Obina, the aforementioned, was one of the guys chasing. Let's send it down to Ian Shearing. Well, we saw Fifita Mosese just a few minutes ago make that great sack there on third down to end the drive for Team Ina. Uh, walk me through that play. How did you get into the backfield? Yeah, I mean, uh, we, we just had a rush call. Stepped up, quarterback stepped up, made a play. Yeah. Uh, from Air Force, here as a senior at the Hula Bowl, tell me what the next uh, semester of school and the next couple of months are going to look like for you as, as your collegiate career winds up. Yeah, um, so a couple months, Pro Day's coming up. Got a 
fo football, train, training for football, and then uh, school, graduate in May. Well, congratulations. Great to have you here at the Hula Bowl, and let's see another couple of those sacks before the game is over. All right, thank you. Come on, take it away. Thanks a lot. How about the direct? snap here for Team Kai, but uh, Team Ino was not fooled one bit. As that one was snapped directly to Gerald Bright. But the hole closed up in a hurry. Right out of Utah State, the next kind of in that long line, right? We see Robert Turbin, a few others come through that Utah State backfield. He was honorable mention in the Mountain West this past season. Kind of split time with Darwin Thompson last year. This season really got to showcase his skills. Really good pass catcher as well. Could be a third down guy in his future. Well, the guy filling the gap there was linebacker Nate Evans, number 41. Uh, he is a tackling machine. A two-time All-American conference selection. He had 112 tackles this past season, Jordan. Yeah, for UCF, just a great sideline-to-sideline -side linebacker. Always around the football. Fake handoff here is Francois. Runs into some trouble. Now tries to run. Loses the football. It was Nico Lalos who was able to lay the hit that knocked it loose at Junior Diaz out of Florida Atlantic. Part of that 11-3 Owls team under Lane Kiffin who was able to fall on it. Johnny on the spot, but Lalos, the Dartmouth representative, yeah, what knocking a, that one loose. What a year for Big Green, right? Ivy League co-champs. He was first team in the Ivy League with five and a half sacks. He, as well as Chris Williams, another kind of unheralded draft prospect out of FCF's Wagner. They were out here after practices running wind sprints, getting a little extra work with each other. Talked about the business nature for a lot of these players coming out. So the punter's been busy here so far. Uh, not yet midway through the first quarter, and that's a pretty good one. Unleashes one deep to DJ Davis, who hauls it in inside the Team Ina 20. We'll be back from Honolulu, Hawaii after this. Welcome back to Aloha Stadium. All defense so far. Each offense just one yard in production so far. But let's look back at some of the production of the players that have been through the Hula Bowl and its enriched history. This is a list of just some of the Heisman Trophy winners to play in the game. Most recently, Ricky Williams. Left off of that list is Steve Spurrier, who was actually one of the celebrity coaches last week for the Polynesian Bowl. But... Uh, those are just a few of the many notable football legends who have taken part in the Hula Bowl over the years. Team Ina bringing the offense out, this time with quarterback Josh Love out of San Jose State. It certainly was a breakout year in his first season as a full-time starter at QB for the Spartans. And on his first play from the screen, he gives it to DJ Davis, who finally finds an opening, finally taken down by Takorian Darden of Western Kentucky. But Davis showing off some of the scoop. Davis, 1,000-yard rusher for Southern Illinois this season. The Salukis, two-time second team in Missouri Valley Football Conference. He's an all-purpose guy. He'll catch a ton of passes as well in his career for Southern Illinois. It's only, I believe, the third designed rushing play that we've seen in this game. 16-yard gain there. Longest play from scrimmage so far for either offense. Another give to Davis. He spins and fights his way for about a yard and a half. As you take another look at Josh Love from Mission Viejo, California. Spartans went five and seven in 2019, but that was a step up. Three and 22 combined the previous two seasons, but he had nearly 4,000 yards in passing production, Jordan. He was outstanding this year. Five games of 400 or more yards through the air. Had a terrific ball game when San Jose State came down here in That's conference right. to play the University of Hawaii for 375 yards in that game. Yeah, Hawaii able to pull out that victory 42-40, but it was a San Jose State offense that was just unstoppable. I don't think they even punted in that game. Here's James Gilbert out of the backfield making the reception out of Kansas State. Part of the 8-5 Wildcat squad this past season. Yeah, graduate transfer from Ball State. Gilbert, a lot of these backs, and you'll see it, especially for this Ina team, dual threats, guys that can catch it out of the backfield. And Josh Love is one of those effortless throwers of the football. Not necessarily physically imposing, but he can really get the ball out quick, and especially on deep balls. His deep ball accuracy is the one thing that really jumps out at you. We'll see if he looks to 
Maybe stretch the arm out at some point while he's in there on this series. It was the other love in the Mountain West Conference, Jordan Love of Utah State, who had been really receiving all of the love when it came to the lists of top quarterback prospects. Josh Love, though, made some noise. Maybe of any quarterback in the Western region, a guy who sort of made the most gains in terms of his overall profile. I would agree there as we see another strike to Gilbert. Saw him once in the flat right. Hit him out in the flat left. But he is a guy, part of that is what San Jose State had done as a team, right? Three wins in the previous two seasons combined. They more than doubled that total this year. We're very competitive and nearly got to bowl eligibility. Started off as a walk-on at San Jose State. Mountain West Conference Offensive Player of the Year this past season and three-time academic All-American. Second down here for Team Ina. And it'll be a keeper by Love, and he is taken down. Cameron Klein there defensively on the play, along with Dominic Szauskis, Klein out of South Dakota. Love showing a little bit of the running ability. Klein for the Yotes, really good season this year, as we saw. Unfortunately, the guy who had running back responsibilities, Alema Collins, come up and down on the turf. Yeah, Alema Collins out of Ottawa University, Arizona. We'll be back. Welcome back. CBS Sports Network has a new show covering all the action on the green. Join Michael Breed as he tees off on the top headlines in the world of golf and gives his unique takes on the game. Course Record with Michael Breed premieres tomorrow morning at 11 Eastern right here on CBS Sports Network. Well, good news. Alema Collins, who went down prior uh, to our sending it to break, uh, did get up, walk to the sideline under his own power. Uh, it was uh, scary for a moment because he went down in a heap. Yeah, he did. Uh, did well on his responsibility, came off the edge, had the running back in that situation, uh, but was good to see him exit under his own power. One of a couple of NAIA standouts that we have in the game. And so third down here, third down and six yards for Team Ina. The deep pass down the sideline incomplete, intended for LaMichael Petway out of Nashville, Arkansas. We mentioned member of the Iowa State Cyclone squad, Big 12 honorable mention. And a guy who is credited by head coach Mike Camp uh, Matt Campbell for uh, really changing the wide receiver culture over there at Iowa State. Yeah, Petway is a big target. Love just putting a little too far outside for Petway to go run down. He is a guy who had been basically the Cyclones' go-to receiver on third down. And they mullen again on to punt, and it is Khalil Dorsey calling in the fair catch. Some of the other legends that have played over the years, I mean, you name it, Mike Ditka, Fran Tarkenton. I mean, look at this list, all the way down to Dan Marino, Deion Sanders. Nick Rolovich was actually an MVP of the Hula Bowl back in 2002. He, of course, most recently the head coach at the University of Hawaii, just took over in Pullman for Washington State after the departure of Mike Leach uh, over to Mississippi State. Yeah, and that was the era of the game when it was held over on Maui at War Memorial Stadium. So a new quarterback in for Team Kai, Quinton Dormady on. First and 10 from the 13 yard line and a quick pass complete to Jojo Ward and the guy who the last couple of years has played his football right here on this field, making the catch and getting close to the first down marker. Jojo Ward, kind of a jitterbug out there. Usual right side receiver, but playing on the left. Dormady out of Central Michigan, He's kind of bounced around throughout his career. He was an incredibly high recruit coming out of high school. He was top five overall in terms of quarterback rankings. Coming into college, started his career in the SEC. The potential is there. You see it when you watch his film from different stops throughout his collegiate career. It's just sort of been putting it all together, a chance to start full-time this season for the Chippewas. Yeah, bouncing around a little bit, Tennessee to Houston, and ultimately to Central Michigan. And here he is now flashing the feet and getting out to the 30-yard line. A little bit more on Quentin Dormady. You see what he did at Tennessee. And uh, as you alluded to, he was very highly ranked number five quarterback by 24-7 uh, in his prep days. Uh, 
and I think you see a lot of those kinds of stories aligning these rosters, right? In, in many ways, a lot of these guys are out for redemption. They may be second chance type of players. And so the talent and the skill, uh, most certainly in some instances, is there. Uh, it's just a matter of showing the scouts that they can do it at the next level. Here's Jawan Washington, uh, one of a long litany of talented running backs out of San Diego State, part of a 10-3 Aztec squad here this past season, uh, coming off of a win against Central Michigan and Quentin Dormady in the New Mexico Bowl, 48-11. Washington getting out for some positive yardage. Yeah, been banged up a little bit this season, missed about a quarter of the 2019 campaign after taking over as a starter two seasons ago, right, whether it's been Rashad Penny or Donnell Pumphrey at San Diego State. You win that job, you're a guy who can run the rock. So we're starting to see a little bit of movement now offensively from either side. Dormady swings it out to Washington, and he's able to get out to about the 40-yard line before he is ultimately iced out of bounds by Jan Johnson, 6'2", linebacker from Penn State. Johnson, a guy with a wrestling background, really good tackler for the Nittany Lions. We see a little bit from Team Kai there, something we saw them working on throughout the week in practice. They'll, they'll go under center, they'll run some out of the gun. And what we saw when they went under center, some 20 personnel at times, some 21 person, they'll go split backs, little throwback. Good look there at Pono Davis, number 74 out of SMU. He's making a homecoming as well. Grew up on the Big Island, uh, Hawaii Island, a Kamehameha Hawaii alum in high school. Here is Washington veering outside and the bounce takes him across the first down marker and into Team Ina territory. Very elder and Tymir Berry finally making the play on defense. Let's send it down to Kainoa Carlson. Hey, thanks guys. I'm joined here now by a guy who will probably be in the Hula Bowl and a lot bigger games in the future. He is an Oregon commit, Farrington Governor, Fa Ope Laulu. Ope, uh, what's it been like having the Hula Bowl back here, giving you a chance to see kind of what's possible at the next level? Um, it's been great. Um, here to support our older brother, Brayden, and proud of how far he's come, and it's just great to see that they actually brought it back here, and hopefully they get to do it again more. Uh, when you when you look at the season that Braden just had, obviously a national championship with the LSU, does it kind of give you a hope, kind of give you a glimpse into what exactly is possible if you go about things the right way, you do well in school, and you perform well on the field? Oh, yeah, I'm sure that I can go above and beyond just like him and just follow his footsteps and probably take it farther. Thank you so much for joining us, Ope. Again, Oregon commit. Can't wait to watch him next season. Jordan Kano, send it back up to you guys. Thanks a lot, uh, Kaino. Yeah, Fa Ope, Lalo Ulu. A monster of a young man. He, of course, went to the same high school as Braden Fehoko for his senior year. Uh, Lalo Ulu this past season. He's a guy recruited by Mario Cristobal and that Oregon staff who has brought in just outstanding linemen after outstanding linemen in his short time there. And Lalo Ulu getting to join those ranks. Yeah, Joe Salavea, associate head coach, credited with some of that as well. Here's Washington finding a hole along that right seam. And he gets first down yardage and then some finally taken down by Monmouth's Tymir Berry. Nice job by Washington. You see him read the cut back there. He's got really good vision. Not often coming down after first contact. No blitzing in this game. So yeah, that also means you can't get after the quarterback. But no run blitzing, no run fits. And so you're going to see a little bit of that surge off the line initially. Johnson taking advantage. Reading the over pursue, a nice little cutback to get north. Yeah, there's now three carries, 31 yards for Washington. Here he is on another delayed draw, and he gets across the 30 and to about the 29-yard line for Team Ina. Thomas Barber from Minnesota on the tackle. Let's send it down to Ian Shearing. Hey, guys, just want a quick update on Alema Collins, the defensive end from Ottawa University, Arizona. He's being treated for a left knee injury. At this point, is questionable to return to this game. Thanks a lot, Ian. Yeah, that's the one thing you do not want to see in any kind of all-star game setting uh, is injury, and there is a look at Collins. Uh, we certainly uh, wish him the best that it is nothing too serious as we see the uh, clock ticking down inside of 20 seconds here in quarter number one. As deep a penetration as we have seen, certainly for Team Kai, Dormady had some time, but quickly that door closed. Nico Lalo, who has been wreaking some havoc Again, the Dartmouth product, 6'5", 270 pounder. The first quarter. He has been making things very uncomfortable for the Team Kai quarterbacks. Quarter number one in the books. Zeros on the scoreboard at the Hula Bowl. One of 
several black sand beaches that can be enjoyed here throughout the Hawaiian Island chain. We welcome you back to Honolulu, Hawaii. And the reboot, if you will, of the Newsweek Hula Bowl. Kanoa Leahy alongside Jordan Helley, Ian Shearing, Kainoa Carlson down on the field, and Team Kai threatening their best drive thus far, and they are doing it with Central Michigan's Quentin Dormady in at quarterback. Yeah, each team, after about the third drive, kind of settled in a little bit. Understandable. You got guys out there playing with each other for the first time. Going to take a little bit of the feeling out. They do face a third and 13 here, however. Dormady, he will try to run with it, and quickly he hits the turf at about the 33-yard line. Thomas Barber was pursuing him there on the tackle. So brings up fourth down. And will we see the field goal unit come out? Yes, we will. It will be Bailey Hale out of Louisiana Tech. Has had some success in this stadium in the 2018 Hawaii Bowl versus the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors. Kicked a 24-yard field goal. Was four for four and extra points in that game. This will be a little heftier in terms of length. Yeah, his long this season, 50 yards. This would best that. So Jacob Tillman out of Florida, the long snapper. Austin Parker, the punter out of Duke, the hold. And this one is good. An impressive boot there by Bailey Hale. At a long of 50 this season for the Bulldogs. And he is able to break the ice here on the scoreboard. Yeah, basically right at 75% for his career at La Tech. Junior college guy came through the ranks, really had to scratch and claw his way. Ended up getting a shot at Louisiana Tech. That's just beautiful right there. Put some points on the board, and he's good from a little further back. Yeah, beats his season high of 50. 51 yarder is good for Bailey Hale, and it is 3 0 in favor of Team Kai. Now, this was yesterday as the two teams held a clinic in separate locations of the island for. Some younger, aspiring, perhaps future hula bowlers. Team Kai and Rex Ryan went out to Waianae High School. These are visuals from Team Ina's clinic, led by Mike Smith down at Aala Park in downtown Honolulu. It made sense, right? The Aala Park, a little more inland. Rex Ryan's Kai team went to Waianae High School, which is basically right on the beach, right on the ocean. So, appropriate. Rex Ryan, he, uh, he loves him some Hawaii. There's no doubt about it. And uh, you can see by the ink that he bears on his leg as that one is booted into the end zone. So it'll be a touchback for Team Aina. But Rex Ryan actually has had five different Polynesian-style tribal tattoos done on his left leg. All of them he has had done here while he has been in the islands. He's a guy I don't think that took a lot of convincing to get him out here. He was one of the first to sign on as news of the Hula Bowl was coming back. And, of course, on the opposite sideline, former coach of the Atlanta Falcons and a guy that coached with Rhett's Ryan in Baltimore. Had a long history there. Mike Smith also agreeing to come out. Players have really enjoyed that aspect as well with the NFL ties. So first and ten here for Team Aina. And we're going to have a reverse here. Maurice French on a hit. He's going to run out of room, gets back to the line of scrimmage, but that is it. Maurice French, who uh, did some work for sure. Tackle made by Khalil Dorsey, but French, you know you've done something when you break a record held by Larry Fitzgerald, one of the all-time greats. Yeah, and the other thing about French, you watch his film. Yeah, he's, he broke Larry Fitzgerald's catch record, which is incredibly impressive. But a lot of his yards as well come via rushing attempts. He was very effective on that jet sweep motion. Talks about how good he is in special teams. Well, if you can't return kicks in an all-star game like this getting the ball on a little reverse in open space you know, that snap gets by josh love and he has to go back inside the Ina 10 yard line to retrieve it and so that's going to bring up third down and a very long here for Ina. yeah part of the process of playing these all-star games getting to know a new center getting to know multiple new centers uh, each team with two separate 
centers, and of course those guys got to get used to the four different quarterbacks that they could be snapping to. Not an easy process, whether you're taking it from under center or back in the gun. So third and 23, again out of the gun, it's Love. Fires over the middle, it is complete to James Gilbert. But not for much. And so that's going to force a team, Ina Punt, that has been a defensively dominated game so far. One of the guys in on the scene, Dominic Sazowskis. 6'2", 255-pounder out of Glenville State in West Virginia. Uh, but he is another guy who has taken a circuitous route throughout his college career. Yeah, he has. Uh, originally a Wisconsin commit, uh, a local guy from up there in Wisconsin. Had some off-the-field issues, ends up going the junior college route, works his way to Glenville State Division II school in West Virginia. Uh, and all he did there was just rack up incredible tackle numbers uh, in his career with the Pioneers. Well, Lake Maimon is getting a workout. The punter for Team Ina, punt retrieved by JoJo Ward. And the Team Kai offense about to come back out onto the field. And Mimone out of Oregon, third in the Pac-12 in terms of yards per punt. Come on to boot it away four times so far. So Rex Ryan's group, he, he manufactured a little bit of the, the motivation, if you will, firing up his guys. Uh, they've got an opportunity here with the lead to go out and they make a little bit of a bigger statement here. They can string a little more offense together. Since Dormady's come in, the ball's moved a little bit better. 42-yard punt there, so first and 10 here ball at the Team Kai 42. And it is a give to the running back, and this will go for about eight, maybe nine yards. Cameron Mayberry, 5'11", running back out of the Colorado School of Mines. Yeah, Cameron Mayberry. Smart guy. He's a metallurgical and materials engineering major. My old major. I, I thought that sounded familiar. Uh, of course, School of Mines, terrific academic institution. He was their workhorse. AP second team All-American as a junior. Numbers dip just a little bit, but still very, very impressive. Tough runner. Really good balance is what stands out when you watch his film. D2 or Diggers went 12-1 in 2019 lost in the second round of the division two ncaa tournament to texas a&m commerce and he's one of those guys kind of interesting you, you get some of the players from bigger programs we've talked about you know jan johnson from penn state we talked about favorable from lsu but there are a handful of guys sprinkled into this ball game division two II, division three and we've seen guys make that leap from the lower divisions into the nfl and you think of guys like andy Thielen. This time is to Gerald Bright, but he gets driven backwards. This is going to be a slight loss on the play. Cecil Cherry and Nate Evans combining forces. Cherry out of Tennessee Martin, and we mentioned Evans already from Central Florida. Yeah, those two have kind of developed a nice bond here this week. Similar players. Cherry 6'1", 235. Evans 6'1", 241. Athletic, kind of that modern-day linebacker. You can play him in the middle play them outside as well on the weak side and both guys they had a great runner sideline to sideline and you saw the pursuit there so second and 12 here in Ina territory Dormady with time nothing downfield though so now on the run throws on the run and it's complete it's caught by Bright eludes a couple of tackles gets inside the 15 still driving those legs and a big gainer there for Team Kai. Jerry Elder out of Westchester University in Pennsylvania on the tackle. Right coming over. You had Jared Rice as well, the tight end, sort of in the vicinity. Watching Dormady's eyes, he kind of locked on his check down. And Bright, nice job working, maintaining that relationship with Dormady, the quarterback, as he rolled out to his left side. And earlier in the ball game, mentioned how Bright doing a lot of his work as a pass catcher, was recruited as a slot receiver, basically told the coaches, hey, put me at running back, and he's excelled ever since. With the longest pass play of the game so far, 33-yard game here. This time, they give it to Bright on the ground, and 
Keikoa Nawahine and Cecil Cherry there on defense. And for Bright, as we mentioned, came in as a slot receiver to Logan, Utah, was a converted high school triple option quarterback. Basically begged the, uh, the coaching staff at Utah State to give him a shot at running back. And it was a decision that worked out pretty well for them. This year has been versatile. 122 yards on the ground, 230 yards receiving in 2019. Second and 10. Here is Bright. Veers off to the left side. And Nawahine again, first to meet him. Nawahine, who is wearing number 10, has worn number 10 in his college career. He wears it for his grandpa, Henry, who donned the number as a running back for BYU back in the 60s. Yeah, Kikoa Nawahine led Boise State in interceptions this season, but he is a safety that likes to come up in the box. He is a guy who likes contact. We saw him during the course of practices come up, and not that they were playing the contact, but he's a guy that flies up the field very quickly, very instinctual. Yeah, one of those guys that had to be reminded to uh, allow the offensive players to stay upright in practice. Normandy. Short drop. Now fires and completes it down to the one-yard line. The catch made by Jamari Hester. Jacksonville State product. Dormady again showing the ability to buy time. Just enough to get Hester a good look. Hester, of course, did a lot of his damage down in the red zone, as you would anticipate for a guy six foot seven out of Miami Central High School, that powerhouse down in Southern Florida. And so a first and goal from the one situation. Can Kai punch it in? The give is to Bright and Arena is able to step up. The Sac State product, the career leader in sacks and TFLs over there for the Hornets, making the stop. Lalos got up the field initially, did a nice job of keeping Bright inside. And then Obina able to come over, as well as David Moore, the defensive tackle out of Boise State. So second down and that much to go for the first touchdown of this Hula Bowl. Under seven minutes to play in this opening half. Normandy going to try to drive it in himself. Getting a little push from behind. Was he able to break the plane? No signal yet. And it looks like he will be short. Tanner Carafa from Boston College, one of the guys putting up the wall. Tana Carafa is such a fun story out of BC. He is a guy that basically played linebacker in high school, went to Chestnut Hill, started as more of an S rusher, edge rusher, and just continued to bulk up and get big. And he's not a huge guy in the middle, 285, but he became their run stuffer. And this is where you see these guys have come to play, right? We're down on the goal line in an all-star game, and guys are getting after him. That's right, third and goal. Here's Juwan Washington off the give, and he gets tackled for a loss. Stepping up and making the play, he Woods Jr. from Oregon, the Chi-Town native, making the play on behalf of the Rose Bowl champs. Woods, another guy, came through junior college, had to fight his way onto that Oregon roster, unblocked. One-on-one -on -one against Jawan Washington. The perfect tackle to bring him down shy of the goal line. And how about this in vintage Rex Ryan fashion team? Kai, fourth and goal at the one. Looks like they're going to go for it here, Jordan. Play clock at about 15 here. You get a good look at Hockey Woods. He's a special teams guy with the Ducks this season. What do they draw up here? Two in the backfield. It's Washington again. Can he get to the goal line? No. And Team Ina representing the land by virtue of the Hawaiian translation. And that was a mountain that Team Kai was unable to surpass. So a goal line stand for the guys in red. They'll take over here. Still 3-0 in the Hula Bowl. Practice. He turned a lot of heads. You see the starting position here for Team Ina. That last high offensive drive, it took over seven minutes, 7.17 to be exact, off of the clock. Offense number 84. After this is to the goal, we play first down. And 
no points to show for it. So a lot of time being taken off of the game clock as you take a look at Braden Fejoko, the D tackle. What a great story he has been. Started his career at Texas Tech collegiately, wearing the Red Raiders logo on one side of his LSU helmet. Uh, that is given to Anthony Davis. Braden Fejoko, who played his high school ball not far from here, Farrington High School, but made four starts for the national champion LSU Tigers. Uh, he is a member and will go down in history as a member of one of the best college teams we have ever seen. Yeah, and he was part of a defense that had some absolute studs on it, was in that rotation, a part-time starter, and one of the leaders of that defensive unit. Roland Rivers the third now in at quarterback here for Team Ina, under pressure in his own end zone. And he fires an incompletion intended for Dante Thompson out of Texas Tech. Roland Rivers the third from Slippery Rock University. And basically the winner of the D2 version of the Heisman Trophy. Yeah, the Harlan Hill Trophy. So Team Ina with both the Division II National Player of the Year and the Division III National Player of the Year as we'll see Brock Rudder, their fourth quarterback, a little bit later on in this game. Roland, Rubber, Roland Rivers, I should say, absolutely lit it on fire at Slippery Rock. His passing and rushing numbers, eye-popping. He is picked off here, though. Taken away by Delrick Abrams. And he is veered out of bounds. The Colorado Buffalo coming up with the INT in a game where we have seen some demonstrative defensive efforts. This time it is Abrams making the play. Rivers having to step up a little late, trying to fire the whole shot to Bandy. Going to fit it into that cover two look on the fade ball. And Abrams able to drop off into coverage. Sitting down in the flat, read it well. And he is a guy that's got the size and range to get a look, right? 6'3", 185 pounds. One of the better tackles, 54 total tackles at corner this season for the Buffaloes. A lot of coaches say he's, he's one of the more mature leaders we've had. And a big play to get tie the football right back. Jake Mayer now out of UC Davis in at quarterback. He gives it to the running back Cameron Mayberry who gets ahead all the way down to the one yard line. It's a golden opportunity here for Team Kai. Going back to Team Ina, three quarterbacks combined for four of ten passing, 19 total yards, and that last INT. So we've seen three quarterbacks for Team Ina. We'll see the third for the Kai. They were down here just moments ago. Right. We'll see if they can punch it in. They've got Faruta, the fullback, in. Myro hasn't taken a lot of snaps under center in his career. Here's Mayberry, and he's going to find the opening off the left side of the line, and he gets in for six. Cameron Mayberry, over 4,000 career rushing yards, 52 touchdowns for Colorado School of Mines, and he gets in for the first TD of this Hula Bowl. It is a nice block by Furuta on the edge, sealing off. The initial edge defender, the Nawahine, trying to scrape over the top, the safety. Last time down on the goal line, Washington was tackled at the half-yard line, in part because he was left one-on-one, -on -one, an unblocked defender. That time, Mayberry got an escort into the end zone. Credit for Ruta there, and Mayberry, a first touchdown in this new era of the Hula Bowl. And here is Bailey Hale. He has loomed large. 51-yard field goal to break the ice. And here he is on for the point after. It was 53 for 53 in extra points this past season. And that one is right down the middle. It is 10-0, Team Kai. 3.31 left to play in the first half. And Kai, like the ocean, getting it flowing. Welcome back to the islands. 3.31 left to play here in the first half of the 2020 Hula Bowl and Cameron Mayberry, four rushes, 20 yards. That last touchdown, the first touchdown scored here in this year's game, and it is Team Kai, head coached by Rex Ryan, off to the 10-0 advantage, and you see what they've done on the turf. In fact, overall offensive numbers for Team Kai have been uh, pretty strong, particularly in this second quarter. Yeah, it really has. About that third, fourth drive and on, we saw them move the football, and a lot of that, the first two drives, really from both teams, 
look to put it in the air on almost every down. Both teams have started to go to the rushing attack a little bit more, especially this Kai group, and we have seen some good runs ripped off by Gerald Bright, Joanna Washington, Cameron Mayberry. And Mayberry, of course, finishing off that jump down the field with the touchdown run. Bailey Hale with the kick. Fair caught by Maurice French. We mentioned he broke Larry Fitzgerald's single season receptions record at 96 this past year. Fitzgerald's record of 92 uh, was the previous mark set in 2003. So anytime you're uh, in the company of or surpassing a guy like Larry Fitzgerald, you're doing something right. Yeah, absolutely. It was the first year for Pittsburgh under new offensive coordinator Mark Whipple, of course, former UMass head coach. Really opened up the offense a little bit, and French was a huge beneficiary. Saw Rex Ryan down on the side. I don't believe that was him paddle boarding in the scenic shot coming back, but we did get where he was swimming with the manta rays the other night. That's right. He was getting the full Kai experience. A uh, fumble on the handoff. And Team Kai is claiming that they have recovered. We are awaiting an official signal, and there it is. Another turnover here for Team Aina. It was a botched handoff. And as you see, Roland Rivers trying to give it to Ty Flanagan. And he just never had it in his grip. Solomon Matautia out of the University of Hawaii with the recovery. Back-to-back -back turnovers, basically. For Aina, and Kai threatening to take a real stranglehold of this ball game. Solomon Matautia, local product as well from the University of Hawaii, from Eva Beach, just a little west of here on the island of Oahu. Five career interceptions. Coming up with a fumble recovery that time to give Kai back the football. So the game's just been living on this end of the field here in quarter number two. And the expression on the face of head coach Mike Smith for Team Ina. Kind of saying it all here first and ten. It is Mayer throwing for the end zone and it goes through the hands of his intended target, Jamari Hester. Let's end it down to Ian Shearing. Well, I'll tell you what, not the first big play that Solomon Montaltier has made here on the field at Aloha Stadium. Walk me through that turnover. Um, I was just doing my job. You know, D-line made a great play on the run and, uh, you know, I was in the right place at the right time. Well, you turned a uh, turnover into seven points on the last possession. You got your offense primed here for another touchdown. How big would it be for you guys to get up potentially three scores going into halftime? That'd be um, amazing because uh, I guess I heard we were the underdogs for this game, so it would mean a lot for us to go up 17-0 before the half. Well, you're the underdogs according to Rex Ryan as we heard before the game. Solomon, thank you. We'll get back to the game, Cano. Thanks a lot, Ian. little play action here. Mayer tries to backhand toss it. Out to Rice and John from Simon Fraser, product of Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. But David Moa applying the pressure defensively there, forcing the risky effort by Mayer. Yeah, Moa just bull rushing into the backfield. We saw him come with a huge stop down on the goal line a couple of possessions ago. John, one of those international guys playing at Simon Fraser, NCAA football program in that Division II level. You gotta love Rex Ryan. He convinced his guys they That's were right. the underdog, although in some of the media availability, he was telling everybody they should be two touchdown favorites. That's right. Whatever gets them in the right frame of mind, right? Here's Mayer, hit as he lets it fly, and he gets it on target. Put it on Aleva Hifo there, and the BYU receiver able to haul it in. Now, NFL rules on catches, we remind you, and so you gotta get both feet in, so a heck of an effort really on both ends of this completion. Yeah, Mayer staring down the barrel. It was good coverage. Obina on the pressure that time for Ina. But Mayer, really quick delivery, accurate. You saw at that time, putting it on a strike, making this a little bit of an easier field goal attempt for Bailey Hale. Yeah, he's going to attempt what is a 39-yarder. Made a 51-yarder earlier. Also good on his only extra point attempt snap is good the hold is good the kick is also good so it's been a bit of a Bailey Hale show offensively for team Kai second made field goal 13 nothing for the boys in blue well this is again the return of the hula bowl after a 12-year hiatus and with that it was also the announcement of the first ever hula bowl hall of fame class of inductees Eric Dickerson one of the all-time greats 
of course, a veteran of this wonderful game. Also a member of the Pro Football Hall of Fame, Anthony Miller, who is in the house out of Tennessee, went on to play in five Pro Bowls. Part of this class, Junior IU, a standout at Arizona State product, uh, who is well known around these islands in the North Shore of Oahu. And Mike White, head coach of Cal, Illinois, and Oakland in the NFL. Yeah, Mike White, former great coach. And then on the other side with the players, I think they only inducted guys who look like they can still play. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. You talk about E.D. Anthony Miller, who we got a chance to talk to pregame. Man, they look like they, they're ready to get out there and run around a little bit still. Well, two turnovers for Team Ina have resulted in 10 points for Team Kai. Now, Go Ogura, one of the group of international players in the game, there to receive the kick. He is out of Nihon University in Tokyo, which is a powerhouse, actually, around those parts. A four-time national championship program there in Japan. Yeah, the, the Japanese element of this game is an intriguing one, right? We've got three players who played collegiately in Japan. Go Ogura, Tsubasa Bren, another receiver with the Aina team. We've also got Kaito Kawashima, a cornerback for the Kai squad. They played some good football over there collegiately. It's got a long history, of course. And then what is getting better and better is the X League, the professional league out there. And we have seen former collegiate players go over there and make a nice career in Japan. Brock Rudder on at quarterback here for Team Aina. Going to try to see if he can get them going. They've sort of been spinning the wheels here in the second quarter. DJ Davis on the carry. Rudder out of North Central College. Uh, he is the winner, essentially, of the Division Three version of the Heisman Trophy. Yeah, Gallardi Trophy winner took North Central to That's their first... That's a warning. Team Ina has two timeouts. Team Kai has one timeout. Nope. Team NFL rules on the two-minute warning as well. We'll bring it back. Welcome back. You see the Kai offensive line helping to pave the way for what has transpired into a 13-0 lead for Team Kai. Break down the championship games and the teams heading to the Super Bowl with analysis from a quarterback's point of view. Watch NFL Monday QB tomorrow night at 6 Eastern right here on CBS Sports Network. And one of the guys we saw there, Jordan Johnson, the center out of UCF. That's one of the three helmets that he brought on the trip. There's more that they had their access to. Uh, in Orlando, but he brought the moon landing helmet. That's right. So that was from the infamous space game that they scheduled against Houston, right? You got Orlando and Houston and sort of those connections to NASA launches. Is <laughs> we have not only players but officials hitting the deck on that play. DJ Davis there offensively on the carry, or on the catch, I should say. And then a assisted tackle for the official there. That's a completion out to Petway. And he steps out of bounds trying to stop the clock here. Under two minutes, and so the clock will stop until the snap. Going tempo. Runner's going to feel very comfortable running this two-minute offense. A lot of what they did at North Central, as we mentioned, leading them to their first national championship at the Division Three level. Ran a bit of a run-pass option, that RPO offense. He's used to going no huddle. He's used to making quick reads. And, of course, if you've got a guy like Petway, you can just put it on his body and he'll go ahead and block out his defender. First and ten. And it is Rudder tucking and running. Gets to the 40. Down he goes there. Just shy of the first down marker. Coming up at halftime, we will bring you a special performance by the Kamehameha Schools Warrior Marching Band. You won't want to miss that. Again, coming up at halftime here. At Aloha Stadium. Rudder being chased. Fires on the run. The catch is made by Petway where his feet inbound. Rolling on the field as the receiver was out of bounds. Incomplete pass. Third down. Now, just like in the NFL, these can be refu uh, reviewed up here in the booth. And this may be one worthy of a second look. What do you think, Jordan? I'd say so. And the other question, does Petway control that all the way through the ground? See if we do get a review here. It was nice pressure by Reggie Walker out of Kansas State, flushing Rudder to his right because the speedster and Michael Dean on a corner route, top of the screen was wide open. And here's a handoff up the gut, and this will move the sticks and bring up 
first down. First charge timeout, T minor. 30 seconds in light. The tackle made there on DJ Davis by Dominic Sazowskis. And so T minor utilizing the timeout. 57 seconds left to play. As you take a look at Mike Smith, who was the D-line assistant under. Game clock operator, please reset the game clock to 59 seconds. We'll add a couple of seconds. Uh, Five Mike, nine, please. Mike Smith was the DL assistant under defensive line coach Rex Ryan. Thank you. At Super Bowl 35, winning with the Baltimore Ravens in 2000. So uh, they have spent some time together. They are very good friends with one another. And as mentioned, as head coaches battling against one another, uh, they are one and one in their career. So this represents the uh, rubber match, and uh, it also represents bragging rights. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, not sure if they put a friendly wager on it, but it was something definitely. We talked to them individually. That was front of mind for them. Of course, Mike Smith, a lot of his early development football-wise coming in Tennessee, played at East Tennessee State, coached for a long time at Tennessee Tech, and then breaking into the professional ranks. Really good defensive mind. We've got two defensive-minded head coaches in this ball game. Makes sense we've only got 13 points on the board so far. First and 10 here for Team Ina. It is Rudder. Fires over the middle. That is complete to Davis. And so Rudder and DJ Davis paving the way here offensively for Team Ina. Travion Beck and Lakeem Williams. Beck out of Cal. Williams out of Syracuse combining on the tackle. Closing in on 40 seconds to play in the first half. Second and three. Firing down to the end zone. It is caught by Michael Dean. And the smallest player on either roster. And of Idaho State hauls in the first Ina touchdown. And adds a little back foot for good measure. 5'6", 160 pounds. And he was the guy that maybe had the most buzz around him. He showed up, as you mentioned, Kanoa, without his helmet. Got lost on the way. It made its way here. But he was running around in practice. Guys in pads and helmets. And he didn't have the helmet out there, but he was still tearing things up. He's a guy who also ran indoor track at Pocatello. Set the school record in the 60-meter dash. That was about a 35-meter dash right up the seam. So with the Ina on the board. His Bengals teammate Ty Flanagan running back on Team Ina. An eight-play, 75-yard drive took a minute and 42 seconds and Nick Vogel able to add the PAT. And hey, if you uh, catch a long touchdown, you get to pose with Anthony Miller and Rich Miano for a picture. It's not a bad little bonus right there. Anthony Miller knows a thing or two about catching touchdown passes. Michael Dean, his athleticism is what everybody raves about, right? His short area quickness began his career as a running back. Young man out of Upland, California. Found his way to Idaho State. Turned into a go-to receiver. 49 catches each of the last two years, over 1,600 receiving yards the last two seasons. Explosive, 17 or so yards per catch in the last two campaigns for him. And then you saw the backflip. That's something that's part of his reputation. He's the guy who's known to break that out. Just so springy. Brock Rudder on the front end of that touchdown. It was a 28-yard connection. Rudder, who has recorded the most passing yards in Division Three history, and we saw a little bit of the arm right there on display, Jordan. Yeah, and that, that's basically what he did a lot at North Central. Quick throws. We saw he and DJ Davis have a real nice connection on that drive, the pass catching running back out of Southern Illinois. And then the quick reads, a couple of quick throws, and then a shot down the seam. Beautiful throw by Rudder. Nick Vogel will kick the PAT out of UAB. Boots that one through the end zone. And so Team Kai will take over 37 seconds left to play. That was an important touchdown, though, just for the tone of this thing. Just to sort of create, I think, a little bit more of a sense of competition here as we gear up for the intermission, a 13-7 score. Yeah, all of a sudden, you know, it could be a one-possession ball game going into halftime. Guys can regroup. Bring a little bit of that added motivation as well. But we'll see. Maybe Kai with their fourth quarterback, Kenji Bahar, out of Monmouth. We'll give him a chance to try and lead a quick score. And Monmouth, the 2019 Big South Conference champs, an 11-3 record. They decide they're just going to down it. And they will take the 13-7 lead 
into the locker room. So it was all Team Kai on the board until the final two minutes. Brock Rudder, DJ Davis, and ultimately Michael Dean able to skill their ways for a touchdown for Team Ina. 13-7 at the break. Let's send it down to Kainoa Carlson. Hey, aloha. Thanks, guys. I'm standing here with one of the smallest guys in stature on the field. Obviously, he's got one of the biggest hearts. Michael Dean, walk us through that touchdown, man. Oh, it was a uh, cover two. They split the field, and I was supposed to bend it, so I took it right up the middle, down the open gap, and he got me the ball. You got a, you got a bunch of fans. You got a big smile on your face. How, how much fun are you having out here playing in this year's school oh, of ball? Blast. A blast. This is awesome. I'm so grateful that they gave me the opportunity to come out. This is my first time over here at the island, so, you know, just soaking up this whole week. Um, it's been a blessing, you know. Great to have you here. Great touchdown, by the way. Yeah. We've got a good game. We're going to send it over now to Ian Schur. Yeah. Quentin Dormany was the quarterback who orchestrated the first couple of drives for Team Kai that really got the ball moving. You didn't punch it in on that first time that goal line stand there, but you get in on your second uh, possession down there after the turnover, and you guys have really started to find a little bit of a rhythm offensively. Yeah, yeah. That's all it takes. Uh, get a couple completions, get the drive going, get a first down and then uh, let the playmakers make the plays. And it's just been a lot of fun. We're having fun over here. In a game like this where it took a little while to get things moving out of the, the start of the game, how do you come out after halftime and try to pick up the momentum right where you leave off? Yeah, I think uh, just go in, regroup, talk about things, and then come back out and execute like, uh, like we did on uh, those drives at the end there. Um, you know, it's obviously challenging when you've only practiced three times um, to come out and execute. So um, just focus on the little details and, and come out and get a drive started. Quentin Dormady, good luck in the second half. We'll see you then. Thank you. Kanoa, back to you. Well, as you heard Ian allude to, it took a little while for the offenses to get any kind of rhythm. Now we've got a competitive game in Hawaii. The Kamehameha School's Warrior Marching Band, along with two Hula Hala, Pua Ali'i Ilima, and Namaka Okuvai Aloha.
back with more from the Kamehameha Kapalama Warrior Marching Band and Color Guard when we return. You know what? Second half of the Hula Bowl coming up after this. We welcome you back to the island. Second half of the 2020 Hula Bowl coming up in just a few moments here at Aloha Stadium. It is 13-7 Kai over Ina at the intermission. Let's send it down to Kainoa Carlson. Thanks, guys. I'm joined here now by Team Ina head coach Mike Smith. Coach, a big touchdown right before the half. How big was that heading into halftime? Oh, it was big for us. We needed to have something good happen for us because we've had a lot of bad things happen. We've got to take care of the football a little bit better, but that was a great two-minute drive. The guys executed, and we got some momentum, some momentum moving into the second half. And second half about to kick off very soon. Kanoa Jordan, send it back to you guys. Actually, back here with Coach Rex Ryan coming out of the locker room to start the game. You said you felt like your team was the underdog in this game. What do you feel about the statement you guys made to start the game? No, I mean, hey, we made a statement, but the statement needs to be made for 60 minutes, not for 30 minutes. So we'll see what happens this, you know, this half. A lot of football to be played. Um, 
hate that we gave up a touchdown right there at uh, before half. You know, young kid turned the wrong way, but that's life in a big city. Still pisses me off. <laughs> Coach. Cano, we'll send it back up to you. Thanks a lot, Ian. Um, Rex Ryan, it doesn't matter if you remind him that this is an all-star game. It's a football game, and that's all that he sees. That's all that matters, right? Yeah, they were in Tampa, too. Middle linebacker got depth, turned the wrong way. Next thing you know, Michael Dean scoring off the opposite shoulder. Uh, and what was a 13 to nothing lead for the Kai team is just a one-possession lead now of 13-7. to Rex is a competitor. He, he loves this. We were talking to Mike Smith as well. Who's obviously got a long history with Rex Ryan. Even he was saying, you know, it's, it's been about three years since he's been on a sideline, and he was really excited to be back out here. These guys set the tone all week. Their competitive fire uh, has been matched by their players. You know, we mentioned that Rex Ryan loves this place, has had five different tribal-style, Polynesian-style tattoos done. All of them have taken place here. Uh, while he has been on trips uh, to the islands and um, when you see him in practice you know he's making some some jokes he's he's teasing some of the players he's going back and forth with some of the other coaches but it's game day and you get the sense Rex Ryan is not messing around it is team Ina kicking away to team Kai here to start the second half team Ina hurt by two turnovers that resulted in 10 Kai points but uh, as mentioned Ina able to get on the board via that touchdown pass uh, to make it interesting here it will be Kenji Bahar out of Monmouth to take over at quarterback 14 Kai here to start things in quarter number three Bahar good size six foot three hundred and ninety pounds he's a guy that took Monmouth FCS playoffs this season really heights they have never seen as a football program there in New Jersey Kind of an effortless thrower of the football. Gerald Bright is the tailback. Dayton Furuta lining up in front of him. Bahar looking to throw. He is flushed. Gets away from the pressure, but then fires out of bounds. It was Pono Davis that was getting in his grill. Here's more on Kenji Bahar. We mentioned Monmouth University. You see his season numbers. Hawks had an 11-3 record falling in the FCS second round of the playoffs. He's got a live arm, a lot of zip on his throws. We've seen that, especially in some of the individual drills, some of the one-on-ones. Let's we'll see if he can translate that here to the team aspect, the 11-on-11, 11 11, putting this on film. He's an intriguing prospect. Ono Davis, the SMU product, putting a little pressure that last night. So here it is, second and ten, and it is a handoff. This is given to Gerald Brighton. Not much there. George Obina, a computer science major out of Sacramento State. He was the guy when the team went out to the north shore of Oahu and visited the Polynesian Cultural Center. He was blown away by just what the culture represented and his exposure to something that he had never really been exposed to before. He also is battling likely with Dominic Sazowskis, linebacker for Team Kai, uh, for the biggest pipes here in this hula bowl. They are, uh, they are bringing the pythons with them, rolling up those sleeves nice and high. You can see some of the physical attributes. He is a really good pass rusher. Here is the throw down the sideline, and it goes in and out of the hands of Jamari Hester. Josh Nurse out of Utah in coverage. That is a big matchup out there. Literally with the six foot seven Hester and Nurse a six foot three corner. You saw the zip from Bahar. I mean it's just a flick of the wrist and he can get it out there. Pretty accurate throw one Hester will want to have back. And so that will force a team Kai Punt and Austin Parker out of Duke, former roommate of you know, quarterback Daniel Jones. And once again put foot in the football and it's a pretty good one. Fair caught at about the 27-yard line by D.J. Davis. Again, team went out to the Polynesian Cultural Center, which is actually the home of the Polynesian Football Hall of Fame. So you have sort of that football history represented there, but then you're also treated to a variety of different Polynesian cultures in the form of dance and song. And Gerald Bright was one of the guys who was getting up on stage, and here he is just... Getting into the role. 
but it was a good time to be had by all. They spent some time out there, too. It includes uh, Luau Mil, uh, and we mentioned uh, some of the series of shows and the tour of the Polynesian Football Hall of Fame. They were out there from about 2 o'clock in the afternoon till about 9 p.m. As the team Ina offense goes to work, it's James Gilbert. He gets upended quickly by Reggie Walker, one of the team captains for the Kai side out of Kansas State. It was a full day out there at the Polynesian Cultural Center. And that's the fun aspect, right? Not just learning about the history and the culture of Hawaii, but at the Polynesian Cultural Center. All areas of Polynesia, Samoa, Tonga as well. Reggie Walker, his brother Robert played at Mississippi State, really athletic family. Rex Ryan was gushing on Walker. Uh, he was saying almost every day of practice, uh, Reggie is a guy who has been balling, and he expected him to have a big game here in this hula bowl. James Gilbert, this time wrapped up by Sazauskas. Sazauskas has already had NFL scouts checking out some of his games, but there's another look at Reggie Walker. It was an all-Big 12 honorable mention selection. 18 career sacks. Yeah, for 30, the K-State guy. 35 career tackles for loss. He's the defensive freshman of the year when he broke onto the scene in Manhattan. But when you're catching Rex Ryan's eye on that defensive line, That's right. you know you've got some, some skill sets. So third down, and it is a handoff. And again, it is Gilbert. He's able to twist his way close to that first down marker. Credit the tackle again to Sazowskis. This will be a close spot. She got the two Kansas State guys going head to head. And then there comes Sizowskis. Hey, he was a tackling machine, Sizowskis, in his time at Granville State. You see the size. I mean, that's what makes him an intriguing prospect. 120 tackles this season for Sizowskis. 254 in his two years at Glenville State. And looky here fourth and one and team Ina on its own 36 yard line appearing to uh, be ready to go for it. Why not coach Mike Smith trying to set the tone early on here. A 13-7 lead for the boys in blue and it is a handoff up the middle and it is going to be a first down run. It is going to be DJ I'll make that James Gilbert once again on the carry Solomon Matautia with the stop yeah you saw there pulling around from the left guard position Adrian McGee helping lead the way 14 starts this year for the national champs at LSU a big time player who's come down to take part in the hula bowl second team all SEC it's a little roll of the dice there by Mike Smith and company results in the first down and this time it'll be a keeper by Brock Rudder he gets rolled up loses the football they're gonna say that he was down at least that's the initial call in Reggie Walker I mean just like Rex Ryan predicted Rudder getting a little overzealous I think as Walker was bearing down on that zone read probably would have been better off giving it to Gilbert as Walker was in the backfield nearly at the mesh point team wrecker right, let's take a look at this replay now the call was that Rudder's knee was down before the ball came loose was it however the only other thing could be forward progress and I think we're going to get a review here. Yeah, we're going to get a challenge from the Kai sideline. I think somebody notified Rex Ryan, hey, look, I don't think the knee was down. And a little celebration dance from Reggie Walker. But according to this replay, it looks like that ball is out. Yeah, I think the only argument would be maybe a little bit of the courtesy. Hey, we're going to blow it early on the forward progress deal. So they do, on the field, rule that the forward progress was halted. And so that call will actually be upheld. And so it results in a second and 16. It won't go down as a strip sack fumble, but that'll show up on film. Right. Right? Reggie Walker's 
going to have that on his tape because, yeah, ultimately, I think, fair to call that not just a sack, but forcing that ball out as well. So second and 16 now for Team Ina. Rudder flushed, loses the football. This time it's a sure thing. Recovered by Team Kai. Terrence Harper, the tallest player in the game at 6'9", 3'15", was able to go down to the field and recover the fumble. Recovered by the defense, first down. Now was this Reggie Walker that jostled it loose? Yeah, give Reggie Walker the caused fumble. And then the big fella, Terrence Harper, out of Campbell University in North Carolina coming up with the recovery. So more defense, yet another turnover for Team Ina. Yeah, the third of the ball game. The last two have resulted in points for Team Kai. Reggie Walker thought he had a forced fumble on the previous snap. Didn't hang his head, came right back. Went and got the ball back on the very next play. You can see why he was impressive to yeah. Rex Ryan all week in practice. Yeah, Rex pretty accurate when he says Reggie's been balling. Balling right there, that's for sure, on that sequence. They try to run a screenplay here from Jordan Jones. And he'll get out for positive yardage inside the Ina 30. Jordan Jones, a tight end out of Prairie View. A and M. Let's send it down to Kainoa Carlson. Kainoa, I'm all over here on T minus sideline, joined now by a very special guest. He's the Detroit Lions middle linebacker, former Rainbow Warrior Jelani Tavai. Uh, Jelani, first of all, welcome back to Aloha Stadium, a place uh, where you made a lot of big plays. You know, when you were in uh, college, the hula ball wasn't around back then. What's it like to be out here and see this game return to Aloha Stadium? Uh, I think it's a great experience for all these guys. Um, I'm not sure how many guys we have out here. I think five, um, but a great opportunity for all of them to. Uh, perform in front of um, all these scouts, coaches, and just to showcase their talents, to show that they can uh, live it, live it in the, the big leagues. You know, um, so it's it's awesome for each one of these guys. You know, the hula bowl. There's a lot of nostalgia, right? It was for a long time one of the premier postseason games. Uh, to see it back here, and just as you mentioned, you got some Warrior brothers out there with JoJo Ward, uh, Jason Matthew Sharsh. How happy uh, were you to watch that season that just unfolded and, and to see them one more time playing in this game? Oh, it's awesome. Uh, it's, it, it's been awesome watching them this whole season. Um, having a 10-game winning season, I wish I could do that. Um, but first of all, I'm sure all the guys, everybody has been thinking like, man, it, it's, a, it's a dream come true to play football in paradise, you know? So... Um, I'm glad they all get to experience that. And uh, to, all the, to all the guys up there ball with, uh, I wish them all luck because, um, you know, the, the next level is it's uh, it's very limited to how many guys can make a team. So I, I know each one of them can do it. Just, uh, just, just got to keep working. This is a proof of product of hard work, talent, dedication. Thanks so much for joining us, Jelani Tavai. Jordan Kanoa, we'll send it back up to you. Thanks a lot, Kainoa. Jelani went from playing his college football in Honolulu to donning the Honolulu blue of the Detroit Lions. You see some of the other Rainbow Warriors in the mix. Now, these are all the players active in the game. Kaimana Padello, a defensive end, is also a member of the Aina roster. Yeah, the Rainbow he is Warriors. inactive tonight because of injury. Rainbow Warriors well represented. Following that 10-win season. So first and 10. It is a give to Gerald Bright. Bright is able to break through that line, and he is finally taken down inside the 10-yard line. Jalen Bates out of Colorado State and Jerry Elder out of Westchester University in Pennsylvania combining on the stop. Bright getting in and out of that cut very quickly. Nice vision by him and then getting north. Let's send it down to Ian Sheeran. All right, defensive end Reggie Walker. Uh, the first play of that drive, the quarterback ruled down uh, by forward progress. No turnover, but you leave no doubt on that second sack. Walk me through what happened. Uh, yeah, the first play, man, we had, uh, I was lining up in a five, and uh, I just took off. And uh, with the club, man, I'm trying to get every, th every ball out I can. And the first play, I thought it was clean, but they caught him down. So, I mean, I had to, like you said, leave no doubt, go out there and do it again. And uh, I had to make sure everybody know I'm getting the balls out. Uh, your defensive coaches here on the sideline, as we've seen this game go on, have been walking up and down saying you guys are controlling this line of scrimmage in this football game. How are you able to do that? Uh, most definitely, man. We just got to be physical every play. I mean, we don't take nothing for granted. 
Yeah, we are here to have fun, but we are also are here to compete, and uh, I think that's what our line of scrimmage is doing on our defense, and uh, I like it. Eyes on the offense to see whether we can turn that turnover into six or seven points. Cano, we'll send it back up to you. Some old-fashioned physical football here from Team Kai, not only there defensively, but offensively, Jordan, they're just pounding the rock right now. Yeah, they have gone to the run game in large part with Bright, offensive coordinator Les Steckel, longtime NFL veteran, former Vikings head coach. Little throwback with the run game. He's saddled up this offensive line here on this drive. Little play action here, though, and Bahar almost throws an interception. That was intended for Rice and John, but there defensively it was Elder. With the steady diet of the run game, you're going to mix in a little play action. Looks like that ball may have been tipped near the line of scrimmage. And so that's going to bring up third and goal on the seven-yard line here for Team Kai. But running behind some of those big fellas up front, including center Jordan Johnson out of Central Florida. First charge timeout, Team Kai. And so a timeout Media here timeout. by Team Kai. They're thinking end zone here on this drive. What do they draw up? We'll find out. Off the coast of the island of Lanai, part of the beautiful Hawaiian island chain. It is second half action of the Hula Bowl here. Rebooted in 2020. And Team Kai threatening third and goal ball at the seven. Rex Ryan signaling for a timeout. We'll see what they come out with. But again, this drive has predominantly been a case of Team Kai just running behind some of those big fellas up front. Yeah, they've gotten some really good contributions. Got Zach Larson at right guard out of southern Utah. Matt McCann, the right tackle, six foot six out of Purdue. Another guy who's been impressive is Gus Lavaca, six foot four, three forty or so out of Oregon State, the left guard. Another big boy, Dayton Furuta, lining up in the tailback position. It's a passing play though, the throw to the end zone, and it is incomplete. Intended for Rice and John, but Obasi Deese out of Cal Lutheran was denying access. How about the Division Three guy? Obasi Dees, 5'10", 160, good coverage there. Skyac product. It's my old conference down there. That's right. Uh, I hate to uh, put it this way, but they beat Occidental 55-21 this season. That's your, your alma mater there. Yeah, that it is. Uh, Cal <laughs> Calus had a good program. The Kingsman, uh, a little rough on my Tigers, though, this year. So that brings up fourth down, and we got another field goal attempt here for Mike Bailey Hale. Please reset. Hale two for two in field goal attempts so far in this game. This is as much of a chippy as he has seen in that regard. 25 yarder is good. So Team Ina, the turnover bug has hurt them in a big way. Three giveaways resulting in 13 high points. Our connection to the truth is lost and we don't believe that we can change this. It may be a shock, but our country stands divided while biased news proliferates. But we can reverse this. While biased news proliferates, our country stands divided. It may be a shock, but we can change this. And we don't believe that our connection to the truth is lost. You can't put a price on love. But if you did, it'd cost the exact same as a Reese's. Turns out love's kind of inexpensive. Ryzen John representing one of the international players in this game out of Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, and Simon Fraser. But you see the rest of the list, Australia and Japan also represented. How about Subasa Brennan? He's a guy who played his high school football for a team here known as Pac-5 uh, in the state of Hawaii and then uh, went on a recruiting trip to various locations in Japan and found a home to play collegiately there. But... Uh, you see what John has done for Simon Frazier. 861 yards in receiving 10 touchdowns for the D2 squad. They are part of the Great Northwest Athletic Conference in NCAA Division II. Hey, he was first team in the GNAC this season. He was their go-to target. And so with Team Kai booting another field goal, they're up 16-7. And Team Ina has its work cut out for it. If not for that last possession touchdown at the end of the first half. This could be much more out of hand here, but they're still in the mix. 4.53 left to play in the third. Yeah, I think a lot of it's just come down to taking care of the football. If your team, Ina, 
give yourself a chance to put together some drives. They have given Team Kai some short fields. The saving grace, two of those have resulted only in field goals. And so we got Josh Love rotating in at quarterback here for Team Aina. It was three for four for 16 yards in the first half. And it is a handoff to Anthony Jones. And Jones is a guy who comes from pretty good stock out of Florida International, but he prepped at Miami Central, a well-respected high school around that region. And is a guy who grew up in the same household as Dalvin Cook. And in actuality, he is technically Dalvin Cook's uncle, even though he is younger in age. And obviously, he is also then related to Georgia running back James Cook. He also high school teammates with... Jamari Hester, receiver from Jacksonville State, who's playing in this game. So second down here for Team Ina. Another running play again. It's Jones busts through. And he gets to the 45-yard line. Braden Conkle out of Montana State. They're on defense. And Conkle just a little slow to get up. Anthony Jones working through that hole there. Ran through the initial tackle. It was Conkle who had to come over and bring him down. You see a lot of that from Jones. Timeout on the field. Well, player timeout. down on the field. That's Conkle. We'll take a timeout as well. The Hawaii. It is the reboot of the Hula Bowl here in 2020. We are in the third quarter. 3.54 left to play. 16-7. Team Kai in front. Braden Conkle was the player for the Kai side down on the field out of Montana State walked very gingerly back to the sideline he's a guy who came out his three younger brothers his girlfriend his parents all coming from the state of Montana to take in this year's hula bowl in person and uh, he was one of the guys who said man I want to come back out to the islands when we don't have a game to prepare for because this has been in many ways a job audition or interview for these players. Bad snap, loose football, another Ina turnover recovered by Gabe Sewell. And he picks it up and he's looking to return it. No whistle here and Sewell into the end zone. Ruling on the field, the ball was fumbled and recovered by the defense. He was not touched out, he's eligible to get up and run. The result is a touchdown. So no whistle, and Gabe Sewell out of Nevada able to scoop it up. It was just a bad snap that went off of the foot of Josh Love. Eventually, Sewell able to recover, and he was actually in recovery celebration mode, realized there was no whistle, and just kept on running. Yeah, it's a little bit of an adjustment for a lot of these players. We saw an instance of it in the first half. I think players maybe realizing a little after the fact that hey we're, we're playing NFL rules here you got to be down by contact Sewell got up and then got the convoy into the end zone and so whereas the last term I forced only resulted in three points said, we'll, we'll just take care of business ourselves. the Kai defense after review the ruling on the fields of touchdown stands so Gabe Sewell with the scoop and score Another touchdown for Team Kai. More points off of Ina turnovers. And this is really starting to get away from the team in red here. Hale on for the extra point, and he has been money. Four Ina turnovers that have resulted in 20 Team Kai points. And here's another look at the bad snap from Jack Kramer. It's a low snap. And saw both Jones and Rudder try and dive after that one. It kind of popped up. And Sewell, big moment for him. Brother had nice impact last week, Polynesian Bowl. How about that celebration? Sewell, whose family is from American Samoa, eventually matriculated to the state of Utah, and that is a name that has been treated around that region as royalty in this gridiron game. Honorable mention, all Mountain West Conference. Brother Penne, the first Polynesian to win the Outland Trophy this year. The tackle at Oregon. Brother Noah played in last week's Polynesian Bowl. He is a five-star linebacker and running back headed to Oregon. Um, of course, he has another brother, Nephi, who is at Utah after transferring from Nevada. So uh, the Sewells are all over the place, and uh, they are thriving. There's no doubt about it. Hey, he's got some family ties to Isaac Sopoonga. 
who is actually the defensive line coach for Team Kai this week, former NFL defensive lineman. Go Ogura back there to retrieve the kickoff in the end zone. And so Team Ina continues to find itself deeper and deeper in the hole here on the scoreboard. Gabe Sewell knows how to uh, handle that football. We saw it on that fumble recovery touchdown, and here he is basically acting as though the football is a coconut, carving into it and drinking in some of the goodness. Sometimes as a linebacker, you got to go find the loose coconut, right? And that football out on the turf, Sewell was first to it, popped up, and as you pointed out, mid-celebration, realized, yeah, I can still keep run, keep running. And he found his way on into the end zone. This defense is in the big impact on the game, forcing the four turnovers, three scores off of turnovers. Roland Rivers in at QB. He gets flushed. He's in trouble. He goes down now by contact. Give the sack to Reggie Walker. Walker beasting here in this second half. Reggie Walker again. Two sacks a couple of drives ago. This defense right now is just pinning their ears back. We saw Mosese Fifita get a big tackle for loss earlier in the ball game. He was first to celebrate there with Reggie Walker. Had 140 career tackles. 6'2", 250. Line him up inside of that five technique. Line him out a little wider at that seven tech. Oh boy, danger zone here. It's Ty Flanagan. Just efforting to get beyond the goal line there. Takorian Darden was all over him defensively. Darden, a two-time All-Conference USA selection. Another one of those guys that began his career as a walk-on. Now remember, these are players who are, we talk about it being a job interview this week, a business trip. These are players who are not only aspiring to get on the radar as it pertains to the NFL draft and or the NFL list of free agency, but also in front of scouts this week from the CFL, the XFL. Heck, they even had a presentation from representatives of WWE. You never know when you're gonna find the next Dwayne Johnson. <laughs> Here is a give of the gut on third and 32. And Braden Fehoko gobbles it up. Fehoko knows about this building. His dad, Vili, was known as Vili the Warrior, who was the primary host, entertainer, and mascot for the University of Hawaii football team. And Braden and his brothers were part of his drumming team. You see some of the photos. He has grown a little bit since then. We can definitely say that. Uh, and he returns now to his old stomping grounds as a national championship just uh, as a national champion just a remarkable story after the championship realized at lsu the punt goes out near midfield Fihoko, who's also just been a wonderful guy to talk to i mean he has taken his time with all the media members obviously this is a hawaii guy come home everybody wants to get a piece of him and he has made himself accessible and available on every level yeah, and he's really taken on the role of sort of liaison for a lot of these players, helping them get acquainted, showing them around a little bit. He's got a couple of teammates here as well. Adrian McGee, you saw him talking it up with Badara Traore, another offensive tackle from LSU, who he was lined up opposite there on that last snap. Let's send it down to Ian Shearing for more. Ian. All right, standing by with Gabe Sewell. Not the first week in a row that a Sewell brother has made a play here at Aloha Stadium. Of course, the Polynesian Bowl was last week. Uh, walk me through that fumble recover and that touchdown. Oh, I'm used to college rules, so when I got out, I thought the play was over. And then Solomon was just like, go, go, go. So I was just hooked as crosses. My first, first touchdown in a long time since high school. I'm just blessed. See all my brothers playing the Polynesian Bowl and, and the Hula Bowl coming back. It's just. It means a lot to the people more than anything. Uh, all the Polynesians, uh, you, everybody can do it. It doesn't matter what, if you come from a small island, you come from Rock, a few in numbers, but we, we pack a punch. Yeah, you packed a punch on that touchdown. Congratulations. Enjoy the rest of the Hula Bowl, and Kano will send it back up to you. Thanks a lot, Ian. Really cool to see for Gabe Sewell. Uh, and I guess give the assist to Solomon Matautia for yelling, hey, run. <laughs> yes, yeah, Solomon was the guy who remembered that they were playing by the NFL rules, right? DeAndre Francois back in at quarterback here for Team Kai, and they really have an opportunity 
to stomp on T minor a little bit more here. The give is to Jawan Washington, and he is veered out of bounds after it appears he gets first down yardage. Right and there is one <laughs> former University of Hawaii linebacker being lauded by another former University of Hawaii linebacker, Jelani Tavai, now a member of the Detroit Lions. Iko Mokeke, also a safety from UH. They're talking to his former teammate. And yeah, kind of going back to Ian's interview there with Gabe Sewell, you, know, you can kind of hear it as well, right? Yes, it's a job at audition in a lot of ways. Yes, you're trying to impress maybe a future team that can take a chance on you at the professional level, regardless of league. That's the end of the third quarter. And that will lead us to the fourth quarter. And Team Kai with the distinct advantage to this point. 23-7 for the fellows in blue. Well, the sunsets around these parts about as picturesque as they get here in Honolulu, Hawaii, as we get set for the fourth quarter of the Hula Bowl. Game summary to this point, really the biggest story, Jordan, four Ina turnovers that have resulted in 20 Team Kai points. Yeah, that's absolutely the story of this ball game. And they came kind of late in the second quarter, and then it snowballed here into the third quarter to give them that 16-point lead as we hit the fourth. You've seen Brock Rudder has done well, four for five when he's gotten an opportunity, but we've also seen the ball put on the ground a couple of times. So Team Kai maintaining possession here as we begin the fourth quarter. DeAndre Francois steps up in the pocket. He's going to fire down the sideline, has a man. It is caught. Touchdown, JoJo Lord of the University of Hawaii. Part of that 10 and five record team, but we have a penalty flag. 10-yard penalty, replay first down. It's going to be a hold against Brandon Kemp, so call it back. Ward, one of three 1,000-yard receivers for Hawaii this past season. This connection, as good as it gets here from what we've seen tonight, Jordan. Yeah, just the second penalty we've seen the all night. The penalty was on 69. First down. All right, so the correction, it's Marcus Keyes there, number 69. Yeah, it might have been hmm. almost more on Lachevius Simmons as he was having a whale of a time trying to keep George Obina in front of him. Well, the officials haven't been calling that many penalties, and they threw out about two or three different numbers, I think, potentially there on that sequence. But uh, they ultimately give it to 69, but I agree with you. I don't think that was Marcus Keyes who committed that hold, at least not according to the angle that we had. Yeah, and it wiped off what was a beautiful throw from Francois. That was something we noted and, and took notice of during practice all week. He had a nice chemistry with both Jason Matthew Sharsh and Jojo Ward, the two University of Hawaii receivers in this ballgame. A single high safety. He put it over the top, but it gets wiped off the board. Well, more penalty flags here as we had. False start. Offense number 78. Five-yard penalty. Remains first down. And this time they call out Simmons out of Tennessee State. FCS program and a member of the Ohio Valley Conference. He's a guy who's been playing tackle. If he gets an opportunity at the next level, could maybe slide inside the guard. Was well, the first team all-conference selection, but right now Team Kai moving backwards. They have a first and 25 scenario. After what was, you know, we saw the picturesque sunset coming back from Brig. That was a picturesque touchdown connection, Francois to Ward. Could be just what the Aina squad needed. Right. Caught a little break. We'll see if they can take advantage. Second and final timeout, Team Kai. Team Kai signaling for its second. Media timeout. And final timeout. So we'll break away as well. Fourth quarter of the Hula Bowl. For what it's worth, Team Kai out of timeouts here. Only two timeouts presented for each team here in the second half. And so Kai using its second and final timeout before that break. Let's send it down to Kainoa Carlson. Thanks, guys. I'm joined here now by a very special guest, the CEO, CEO of New Life Ventures, Bill Resides. Now, Bill, you were instrumental in bringing this game back. Why was it important for the Hula Bowl to make its return? You know, it's been a tradition since 1947. Um, ended in 2008. Nick Logan, a personal friend of mine, um, I've been working with him for a few years, and said, you know, but love Hawaii, love college football. Uh, let's bring this tradition back. 
And why is it important? Obviously, this is the first time it's back in 12 years. Yep. Why is it important that this game continues to be available to the players moving forward? Um, you know, these, these young adults have been working all their lives for a moment like this right here. What better place than Hawaii to debut their talents? You know, I, I, uh, as a CEO of a health and wellness company, you know, our, our mission is uh, redefining health and wellness. Uh, these guys are getting beat up all their lives. You know, uh, we, we are launching a, a product, Avison uh, device, that we're going to be going global with this year. And it was important for us to participate this year, you know, 2020, uh, with uh, with Nick Logan bringing, bringing us back. So we're, we're excited about the game. We're excited about Hawaii. Uh, and, you know, let's, let's keep this tradition alive. We're hoping it's, uh, it's, it'll be here for many years to come. Kanoa Jordan, we'll send it back up to you guys. Thanks a lot, Kanoa. Yeah, the Hula Bowl first organized in 1946. The first game was held in 1947, and it started as an all-star game that featured college players from the mainland against local high school football players. And as you can imagine, it was fairly lopsided in some of the initial years. In 1960, they switched it to an all-college, all-star format. It was held at Old Honolulu Stadium until Aloha Stadium opened in 1975. It was held here for many years. In 1998, it moved to the island of Maui and War Memorial Stadium and then moved back to Aloha Stadium for a couple more seasons until in 2008. Uh, that was the final Hula Bowl played until its resurrection here in 2020. Yeah, it's so great to have it back. I think a lot of people around the state were excited when they heard the news. Obviously, it has been an integral part of really associated with college football for, you know, over half a century. And to have it go away for a time wasn't great, but to have it back, uh, I think bringing back a lot of those old memories of, of folks coming out at whatever venue it was in a particular year and, and seeing some of these great collegians. Here's Francois on third and long here for Team Kai. Has an opening, can run if he wants to. Now he will and is pulled down out of bounds by Michael Scott in Ina territory, but it will be well short of a first down. And obviously, every era of the Hula Bowl, every stage, it sort of transformed and reinvented itself. And this is another reinvention, right? These aren't players who have the luxury of having been high on the prospect lists and the draft boards for teams throughout their careers. These are players who are still trying to earn that distinction. And you felt it. The climate at practice was one of high competition. These players were putting forth effort. This was not a vacation week for the participants here in this edition of the Hula Bowl. You guys were getting after it in practice and really competing, especially on some of the individual drills where they maybe went a little more contact. <laughs> and got a chance to showcase. And these guys are trying to prove themselves. It's kind of interesting. You look at some of the mock drafts out there, some of the higher rated prospects in this game. Austin Parker, the punter out of Duke, uh, and the long snapper for the Ina team, Rex Sunahar, out of West Virginia. Well, tomorrow night at 7 Eastern, college basketball action continues as we have a Patriot League showcase between Lehigh and American only on CBS Sports Network. Obviously, the sports world, not only the sport of basketball, but the entire sports world, and, and really it transcends just those who are fans of sports, but everyone mourning the news today that came of the passing of NBA legend Kobe Bryant aboard a helicopter crash just outside of Los Angeles. His daughter Gianna also among the victims, and so uh, our hearts, thoughts, prayers go out to all of them and all those who were affected uh, and many of the players here who are donning numbers and inscriptions where they honor Kobe Bryant and his memory uh, it just goes to show right I mean he wasn't just a basketball player this is a guy who was so highly regarded you see it in the reaction of national and international shock uh, at what transpired here today yeah, he, he was a rare individual that, that transcended. You're talking internationally, you're talking beyond just the realm of sports. Uh, he's one of those guys, he, he was a one-name entity. He, he was Kobe uh, and touched a lot of people in a lot of different aspects of life, and I think you saw that today in the outpouring of love and support. So Team Ina controls. This is a pass down the sideline. Had possibilities. 
It will actually be intercepted, but out of bounds. As Amir Dorsey was the intended target, and Marquise Bridges holds it in. 52, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. And that was Lakeem Williams out of Syracuse who came in and laid a boom on Ryan Willis, called for roughing the passer. Check it out. Now Williams up high, and that'll draw a flag anytime, regardless of all-star game. We were just talking about how competitive the environment was at practice, and that's an indication right there of it. I mean, that was no holds barred there by Lakeem Williams. Started all 12 games in 2019. Was third in the ACC with 110 tackles. But the penalty is drawn. First and 10 now for Team Ina. Not only have they been losing the turnover battle, but Ina's been losing significantly in the field position battle. And here they are deep in their own territory once again. Willis tosses it over the middle to Flanagan. Flanagan with some blockers in front of him. He gets out to the 40-yard line before he's finally taken down by Lakeem Williams. Willis back in there at quarterback out of Virginia Tech. Chance to maybe throw the football a bit down the two scores, two possessions, if you will, down 16. A nice way to jumpstart the offense. A little quick screen out to the left for Ty Flanagan. This guy who didn't catch a lot of passes in his time at Idaho State. Was a workhorse on the ground. 24 touchdowns in his career. He had a 24 rushing touchdowns, fourth most in Idaho State history. Willis, short drop, fires to the near side, and that one broken up by Khalil Dorsey out of Northern Arizona, intended for Amir Dorsey. So Ryan Willis, the quarterback, took the shot a few moments ago out of Virginia Tech, started 11 games at Kansas from 2015 to 2016, had a big 2018 at VTech. Injury cut short his opportunity for more starts here in 2019. Yeah, he's the guy who played the game very aggressively. Uh, and I think trying to show here in the pre-draft process that he can play it consistently and take advantage of a lot of physical talents. And this is a give to Flanagan. Flanagan putting in some work here. Adam Rodriguez out of Weber State finally there to take him down. Ryan Willis getting back to him, the quarterback for Team Ina. His dad, Steve, was a kicker at Kansas State. Actually great friends with a guy who was in the house, Nick Lowry, a three-time Pro Bowl kicker with the Kansas City Chiefs. He was wearing the Chiefs gear. He knows that the Chiefs are in a big game here a week from now. But uh, Nick Lowry, it was really fun to sort of have him around practice and told a lot of really wonderful Pro Bowl stories. Of course, the Pro Bowl was hosted here at Aloha Stadium for over 30 years. And actually played on a few Pro Bowl teams with now Hula Bowl Hall of Famer Anthony Miller. It's fun to see those two catch up. Third down. Willis fires to the flats. Incomplete. Too low for Flanagan. So that's going to bring up fourth down. And if you're Team Ina, under 10 minutes to play, you're pretty much forced to go for it here, right? Yeah, we saw them from even further in their own territory in the third quarter go for it on fourth and one this one a little lengthier it looks like a true two yards that they're going to have to pick up but down 16 why not it was what nick lowry and anthony miller were actually talking about an onside kick <laughs> that they executed here at aloha stadium in a pro bowl of yesteryear that's right anthony miller recovered it returned it for a touchdown uh, but alas the officials threw a flag for an offside and called it back so the officials getting in the way again of what would have been an ultimate Pro Bowl highlight. Here's a burst here by Flanagan. Twisting away from would-be tackler, still pumping the legs. And gets it all the way down to the 25-yard line. A couple of extra yards with Anthony McGee, or excuse me, Adrian McGee, the guard out of LSU, coming in, helping escort him. Flanagan, strong lower body. It stands out on film. Powerful legs. That time carrying a couple of defenders along for the ride. Yeah, Ikomo Keke from Hawaii and Douglas Coleman the third from Texas Tech. Both required in trying to pull down Ty Flanagan. Low snap here. The late handoff there to DJ Davis. And so he's fortunate just to 
maintain possession of the football and gets back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, we've seen Ina turn it over once already on a low snap. Ty Flanagan, five rushes, 36 yards now here for Team Ina. As Gilbert's going to come in, third running back. We have seen on this drive alone, also coming back in, you got Michael Dean, the touchdown recipient. Heading in this direction late in the first half. Eight and a half minutes to play. Willis will be chased and then just dumps it down into the field. Is hit after the fact. Number 33 for the offense was a receiver in the area. That's an incomplete pass. So no intentional ground. Here. And as you take another look. Misiona Ayolupotea Pei out of Washington State. A defensive tackle born in Wellington, New Zealand. Had a career high seven tackles against Air Force in the Cheez It Bowl, nicknamed the Missile by former Colorado coach Dan Hawkins, who saw him play in the Down Under Bowl a few years back. But Ayolupotea Pei making things uncomfortable for Ryan Willis there. That he was, it was on a screen. This is a completion to Anthony Jones out of the backfield. A little stiff arm there. And he's rolled up in the red zone. And on that previous play was Mosese Fifita who took away Gilbert, the would-be recipient of that screen play. And Willis ended up paying the price. But this time Willis, confident throw. Again, linking up with a running back. Jones, a guy who's battled injury at different points throughout his career. But that win for FIU at the end of the season when they beat Miami. Yeah, that was big. FIU Twitter account called his touchdown run that sealed the game in the win over the Hurricanes. The biggest run in FIU history. Of course, right down the road is Florida International. He's been through some stuff. He was the victim of a random drive-by shooting in 2018. And in many ways, it's miraculous that he survived and it's miraculous that he continues to play this game of football at a high level. Another botched snap there and Willis has to give himself up. Yeah, it's been a bugaboo for Ina in this ball game. Just trying to get that center quarterback exchange squared away. There is going to be at the conclusion of this game an MVP named for each team. Uh, the question is, are they both going to be on the defensive side? The way this thing has gone, certainly that has defined the evening so far for Team Kai. Yeah, we've had some standouts in this ballgame. We talked about Reggie Walker, Nico Lalos, a couple of sacks for Team Ina. Timeout. First charge, Team Ina. Team Ina will Immediate call timeout. a timeout. They'll have one remaining. 6.36 left to play in the Hula Bowl. We welcome you back to Aloha Stadium. Kanoa Leahy next to Jordan Helley, Ian Shearing, Kanoa Carlson down on the field. 6.38 left to play. The fellas in blue have been dominating this one, particularly on the defensive side. They have forced four Team Ina turnovers, resulting in 20 Team Kai points, and almost closed the door on Ryan Willis there. He's able to scramble back to the line of scrimmage. Adam Rodriguez takes him down there. And that's going to bring up third and 13 here. For the team in red. This defensive line for Team Kai maybe been the most impressive position group on either side of the football for both of these teams. Reggie Walker, Braden Fehoko, Mosese Fifita, that defensive tackle. Ayola Potea Pei has been really good in this ball game. Terrence Harper has covered up a, def uh, a fumble. Adam Rodriguez, a couple of tackles for loss. A big third down here. And if Ina has any hopes trying to make this interesting. But that's not very interesting if you're Ryan Willis. Mosese Fifita just gobbles him up again. You just talked about him, Jordan, making another play. This is a guy who's a really good pass rusher inside. You see him use his hands. Extended, able to make the inside move. At 330 pounds. His sack numbers really jump out at you. And again, this is a game where you can't blitz. These guys are doing it all up front. There's not a whole lot of games. There's not a whole lot of stunts being done up there. 
I believe that's now five total sacks here on the Kai side. And as you mentioned, no blitzing allowed. So this is just all that defensive front. A lot of it's just one-on-one -on -one battles, individual battles being won by the front four. Four-team Kai. Willis stepping up on fourth down. He's going to get rolled up again. Reggie Walker, who might be honing in on an MVP honor. I was going to say, his candidacy, I think, is now undeniable as the Team Kai MVP. I think the overall MVP, if we're considering that as well. Three sacks for him. It's forced, forced a fumble. And if you're talking about guys who have made the biggest impression in this ball game for potential scouts and teams looking for some prospects out of this Hula Bowl. Reggie Walker's star has shined the brightest. And he has put in a tremendous performance here in his final collegiate game. And one that could, if he is being looked upon in that way, could potentially lead him into the next level, the next stage of his career. And as Team Kai's offense takes over, it's Cameron Mayberry. And Team Kai now with a chance to just start running this thing down if they can string together some timeouts. Only one timeout remaining between the two teams. It's Team Ina hanging on to it. Yeah, it's kind of interesting to see, right? I mean, these guys are out there. Hey, maybe, you know, give an opportunity to put the ball in the air or something like that. But Rex Ryan, he's out here to win the ball game. That's right. And he wants to keep that clock moving, which is great to see. He's put together a staff, that's for sure. You mentioned Les Steckel, former Minnesota Vikings head coach, the offense coordinator, Dennis Thurman, the defensive coordinator, former NFL DB who coached along with Rex Ryan at his stops with the Jets and the Buffalo Bills. And there is a defensive play there, Nico Lalos. Coming up and taking down Quentin Dormady, and that may seal the deal. Possible MVP candidacy for Nico Lalos. Yeah, he's got three sets. It was a slow developing counterplay, and Lalos got there before Dormady could even hand it off. Try to rip it out of there. Dormady somehow held on to the football. The guy had a Dartmouth. You know, Lalos, along with defensive tackle Chris Williams, number 78, for Team Ina out of Wagner. Uh, they were both putting in extra work so the practices ended and while it was competitive certainly during the practice sessions these are guys who are putting in extra running extra drill work even after the practices has concluded yeah, and because they had so many activities in the afternoon and evening trips to Polynesian Cultural Center and the like a lot of those practices came in the middle of the day the hottest part of the day <laughs> That's right. so these guys are out there under the mid-afternoon sun give to Mayberry. He's tossed around and brought down near the original line of scrimmage. And you know, it, it, some of that too, right? Uh, Lalos and Williams creating a bond, getting to know each other, talking to some of the other, Tymir Berry, defensive back out of Monmouth, asking him, you know, hey, what's been the best part about this? the guys? Like just being around a different group of guys, having fun with them. And something we were talking about a little bit earlier, yes, it's an opportunity for these guys to audition for a potential job but at the end of the day it's also one last collegiate football game and these guys just have such a blast being out here competing getting a chance to put on the helmet and shoulder pads one more time we heard it in the interview with Sewell these guys are they're football players and, and one last opportunity who knows what the future holds but they get this game at the very least well and a first time opportunity for That's so many of them and perhaps I would say the majority of these players in their first trip ever out to the Hawaiian Islands. And as you can see by some of the scenery, it was a pretty wonderful trip. Two-minute warning. It's a Welcome back to Aloha Stadium. Kanoa Leahy, Jordan Helley. We have Ian Shearing and Kanoa Carlson down on the field. We're in the two-minute warning. Team Kai all over Team Ina here in this reboot of the Hula Bowl 23-7 but facing a fourth down here coming out of that break. And so they bring the punt team on. We were talking about this experience for the players and not just from a football 
and career standpoint where they're trying to extend their football lives, so to speak. But uh, just coming out to the islands for the majority of these players, I'd say it was the first ever trip out here. In fact, Amir Dorsey, receiver for Team Ina out of Rhode Island, he said that he had never even been to the west region of the country. And so you can imagine coming all the way from where he was playing his college football uh, it was a long flight and he said it was as nervous as he has ever been well he's got to go back uh, i'm not sure if <laughs> he has given that too much thought just yet he's already done the trip out see old hat old hat now huh? dj davis calling in the punt obviously a homecoming for many other players we've talked about Braden Fehoko, you mentioned Rex Sunahara, the long snapper for Team Aina out of West Virginia. His dad, Reed, a Hilo native on the Big Island of Hawaii and considered one of the best all-around athletes to ever come out of the 50th state. He is now the women's volleyball head coach at West Virginia. And so a chance for Rex to come back home. He says they've made it an annual trip to visit family. So that was, speaking of old hat, a pretty familiar experience for him as that pass falls incomplete. Yeah, he said a lot of his family made the trip over a couple days ago, came over from the Big Island. His parents coming back home as well to come watch Rex. And, you know, we're not talking a ton about long snappers in this ball game, especially with no rush on the special team snaps and, and no returns, so he's not going down and covering. But he is a guy, you look at some of the draft pundits out there, that is pretty highly rated at the long snapper position. Basically consensus top three, probably going to get a look at the next level. Yeah, maybe perhaps not drafted, not a ton of long snappers get picked as Rock Rudder runs out of room and just tosses it out of bounds. But a guy who you would imagine is going to be brought into a camp somewhere. And, man, if you can make it into the league as a long snapper, uh, you have the potential to play for a very long time. Hey, he's a guy with great size, right? 6'6", 245. Maybe a chance to go make a career out of it. I'd also like to see the intramural basketball team with he and his punter, Blake Mamone, 6'6", <laughs> 230 out of Oregon. Yeah, no kidding. Not two on two. We get two on two going or something. In one of these outdoor courts. Not your run of the mill punting battery here. Rushes on. Rudder. Oh, the feet sort of got stuck in the turf. And Nasir Player, 6'5, 240 pound DN from East Tennessee State, able to cover him up. Yeah, it was very productive. For the Buccaneers. Closing in, he saw Rudder lose his footing there. So basically everybody, all 10 of the defensive linemen that suited up here today for Team Kai. I think we've called their name in the backfield at least once. And reclines another one of those guys. We saw him make a play in the first half out of South Dakota. That is now the official count is now six sacks by this Team Kai defense. That's no joke. <laughs> Again, it's Blair. And he brings Rudder down on fourth and long. Now see your player making a late charge in the stat book. Yeah, I think he wants to make sure the uh, the MVP ballots haven't been counted yet. Two sacks on back-to-back -back plays. That's about as appropriate an ending, I think, as we could have for this game. Is one of those guys on the Kai defensive line getting in the backfield. Rex Ryan gets the shower. Well, that's right. He got uh, the dousing from the water jug. And usually if you're playing January football, you get a Gatorade shower, ice bath, it's a little cold out. This is the perfect place to get, this is the place. To get the shower in January. And they got them very well. I mean, that was a thorough dumping of the liquid there on Rex Ryan. Nice and refreshing for Rex. And he, he was he was out to win this game. That's right. He has now the the bragging rights. Is uh, shortly going to be able to proclaim victory in this rubber match between himself and Mike Smith. As we mentioned, a guy who has hung his hat on defense his entire career. It's in his blood. It's in the genes. 
His defense got after it tonight. An impressive group up front, particularly Reggie Walker. He called it, yeah. I mean, he was talking about Reggie Walker and some of these other individuals and thought, hey, look, our defense has the ability to wreak some havoc. And, of course, the narrative from Rex's point of view to his team preceding an all-star football game was everybody thinks you're going to lose. So let's go out there and prove them wrong. And it seemed as though Team Kai came out with a little bit of a chip on their shoulder for what it's worth. And in this setting, in this competitive atmosphere for these players who are hoping to achieve their next level gridiron dreams it results in a victory for team kai 23 to 7 as the final seconds will take off the clock the two head coaches former coaching mates super bowl winning season with the baltimore ravens good friends going back years Embracing one another and talking story and yep, Rex Ryan, you imagine maybe already starting to boast just a little bit. Team Kai, the victory. We'll have the MVPs when we come back. Welcome back. Final score, Team Kai 23, Team Ina 7 in this reboot of the Hula Bowl. For the presentation of tonight's MVPs, we send it down to Executive Director Rich Miano. Aloha. I'm with the two MVPs of the 74th Annual Hula Bowl from Dartmouth, Nico Lelos. Big hand for Nico. Uh, I just want to thank all my teammates. You guys are a great group of guys. I had a blast this week. And the coaches, you guys are great. Taught me a lot. So I appreciate all you guys. Thank you. Four sacks. Just a terror coming from that defensive line position on the Kai team, the winning team, Reggie Walker. Reggie, say a few words. Oh, man, I'm really uh, blessed to be here, and, uh, and I really enjoy myself. And uh, I love all my teammates, all these guys, man. They really, I had a, <laughs> I had a great weekend, and, man, it's, it's just a blessing, you know. It's really, a, you know, you enjoy your life, and uh, I'm really glad to be here. How often in life do you have two defensive ends, both the same numbers, both had big time sacks, tackles for losses, a big hand for both defensive ends, Nico and Reggie, aloha. All right, well, Rich Miano, a defensive player in his playing days, you know he loves giving the MVP to a couple of defensive ends, both wearing number 90. Uh, defense was the name of the game tonight, Jordan. It really was. The four turnovers forced by Team Kai ended up being the difference. It was that front four. We really saw all 10 guys get after it, including Reggie Walker, the MVP for Team Kai. Nico Lalos not to be outdone, but the defense so impressive here today. Yeah, and you could sense it from those guys, a genuine enjoyment of this experience in this return of the Hula Bowl. For Ian Shearing, Kanoa Carlson, Jordan Helley, I'm Kanoa Leahy. And for our entire crew, this has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports.